Hello. 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 <laughs> um, hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, fun, fun, fun game. Um, I pressed the wrong button and, um, uh, yeah, I got... <laughs> No worries. Look at me. I'm working the background. I'm. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I'm going to put this on. Ooh, get in there. Oh, there we go. Right, should we go roll credits? Yes. <laughs> don't tell me. Let's roll credits. Hang on a minute. Right, where am I? Hang on, hang on. Don't tell me. I know. Yes. Here we go. Welcome to the kitchen sink We will chat, we will make you think You will not want to go to the loo You could miss a lot if you have that poo Stay and watch and join in Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the kitchen sink We're almost professional, almost and after last week, I'm alcoholic again this week, Lucy. I'm not. <laughs> G&T. Oh, look at that. We've already got first comment. Hey, it's Ray. <laughs> Hi, Ray. How's it going? You well? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Um, that, that link I sent you, we need yes. to double check that we sent Claire the right link. Um, I forwarded your link and I said, click on this one. Yes, I, I may have gone into um, the, the, the machine and I may have pressed go live on somebody else's show. <laughs> oh, God, I'll get back to it. Hang on. Bear with me. I'm, Bear with I am. Me. I am literally just writing the apology letter now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang um, on. Yeah, it's not the right one. The one I send you is not the right one. Abort, abort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I got something right. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. I went in and I thought, this is strange. The background's not there. This isn't there. So I went into somebody <laughs> else's show. I've changed all their background. I pressed go live and it said, you don't want to go live until Sunday at 4 p.m. And I'm thinking, I think I know what I want, mate. Don't be telling me this. I, yeah. I, I know what I want. <laughs> Pressed it, did it. And I'm like, well, that's strange. It's not come up on my phone. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a little bit of a space cadet today. Brilliant. Ah, that's, that's all right. Um, it's your turn, to be fair, isn't it? Ray, don't we always? Ray says, bit glum to be TBH, to be honest. So to be honest. TBH, WTF, IRL, everything's an, an anachronism. Is that an anachronism? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know I'm on water. Lemon no, water. No. An, an anachronism. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink the lemon water and save the pink G and T for when Claire comes on because it's already gone to my head because I'm in a bit of a busy day and I haven't stopped to have my tea. I normally have my tea, but um, I haven't done that today. Oh, this is fascinating, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hey y'all. Hello, we've got a newbie. I, I don't recognise this one. Juicy, oh, juiced bash herb, bash herb, juice bash herb. Hello, name. Hello, everybody. My name is Juice Bash Herb. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hello. Oh, Angie Belcher. Thanks, babes. Another <laughs> <laughs> one that says looking sexy. Thank you very much. Can I just say, while while Lucy's uh, catching up with herself, apologising uh, me profusely. <laughs> My hair went well today, guys. It does. I it is looking it good. Thank you. I, it's, it went shockingly actually quite well. And it was a bit dry at the ends. I put a, a bit of serum on the end. So now it's finally, I think it, yeah, it's looking good. And I'm over the shock. Six weeks has been since I had a haircut. I'm over the shock of it being 
super short because it went up it went up it was like there and i went up to like there and now it's down a bit <clears throat> to all our male viewers you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> we need the viewers we need the viewers last week we had 10 today we've got 53 i suspect that's for our fantastic special guest claire figures walking walking oh god i do know her name because i'm the one who invited her claire we, walker i think we're being Hoodson. trolled but i'm not sure oh yay cool we haven't had one for a while bunch of midday drunk crumpet gobbling old what thoughts Drops. makes me funny already matthew mullen oh matthew what what's wrong with you boy what's happening okay, babe? Man. You okay? You okay. <laughs> you haven't seen that show before, have you? Um, I suggest you piss off and have a little look and see what we do. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless you're a 13 year old boy, which looking at your face, at your photo, you look like a middle aged man. So come on, be a bit yeah, nice. he's holding on to the cure, still looking like a, like a relevant yeah. look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, emo, calm down. Acronym. <laughs> Acronym. Acronym. Oh, do you know? So, don't come for me today, guys. I, I've had a bit of a day. Let me just say. <laughs> last time Sarah went to get a haircut, unfortunately, they did take a little bit more than they wanted, and due to that fact, I haven't asked her about her hair now in a good how many weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've gone three weeks, maybe two. Maybe, How's the hair, maybe two weeks of the hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Ray, my hair looks great. Thanks, Ray. There we go. <laughs> um so i've started working in a restaurant just to uh to help my comedic uh my comedic career um and i don't know i don't know how to work any of this into comedy routines but i get i i just when people don't finish their plates of food because um i was brought up a fat lass um i i just so i sort of take their plates and smile and as soon as my back is turned i'm like where's wh What's wrong? Why, why, why haven't you eaten your food? What is it? Too good for it? Who goes out to a restaurant for diet? Like, come on, sort your face out. Who, who's not eating their food? What food is it? It's what, a, kind of oh, food you, what kind of restaurant are you in? And also, do you not want to be fired yet? <laughs> I don't want to be fired yet, but and I have. I've said. I've told everyone. It's like it's um, it's a, it's a carvery, and the food is lush, absolutely lush. And I, this is, I don't know how to make this work into a comedy routine but why would you go to a carvery and order non-carvery food yes that to um, me that to me says psychopath i'm a vegetarian slash vegan most days and i have to say i love a bloody carvery obviously without the meat <laughs> but like, <laughs> just, you can get like name me you got a toby and there's just a shitload of edge like, i've got a parsnip and have some thin gravy <laughs> <laughs> oh it's i like the sauces like the apple sauce cranberry just all the sauces on there as well fantastic so you know, i'm a little bit um angie's telling us i'm a massive cfw fan angie you and me both you and me both. I love Claire. Claire Fuchs and Walker. I love Claire. She's um, amazing. So I can't wait for her to come on. Uh, Lucy's a bit of a, you're a bit of a newbie to Claire, aren't you? Yeah, I've enjoyed looking up all the, or reading the articles and watching the poetry um, and the stand up. Um, I, I, well, the brilliant thing is with um, when we do our comedy reviews, it's usually something I know and then you know, vice versa, and we learn about new different comics. Um, and for this one, I've, I've, um, you know, at this one is completely, this lady is completely new to me, so I'm very excited. Yeah, I know that we're that. all artists. I know that you know, Angie, you're an artist. I'm an artist. Blair is an artist, but like, feel like saying, I feel like saying, like, um, but you know, Claire's a real one. <laughs> <laughs> She's like legit, like my friend Alex, like legit artist, <laughs> like. Not, not with the. You know when anyone says artist, I've always mentally got the word piss in front of it. Claire does not even have the word piss in front of the word art. She's a proper. There's no. 
she's a proper artist so i'm a bit like oh and like you know like at the beginning where you're man um fangirling 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 over lots of people well, I, i'm a bit of a fangirl for claire she's just amazing and uh yeah she's so good but uh you know i, I saw her well i mean no let's crack on later on because i just have to catch up on um what was i gonna say to you oh yeah how yeah um Ray, Ray doing an old Pink Floyd impersonation there. Yeah, so tell us more about your restaurant. Are you enjoying um, it? Absolutely, I am enjoying it. All all the people I'm working with are absolutely lovely. Um, mm -hmm. And and even though I haven't done sort of um, restaurant work for bloody ages, oh, it comes back too quickly. You yeah. know, oh, how am I going to cope? And the next minute, you know, you've got three plates on your arm and you're throwing. <laughs> throwing <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's a bit like riding a bike. You just don't forget it, do you? No. No. And um, uh, when the lady started. Yeah, like the lady um, um, that started at the same time as me, um, it's a bit older than me, but she's never, ever done any restaurant work. And I was like, how? <laughs> <laughs> everyone's up although i've never done i've done bar work i've never done restaurant work though if i'm looking distracted because oh, well, i'm trying to find the banner thing to take that that bit down but it's because it can stay there for now is that yes oh yeah, and okay, to okay. Add to these, can i just say if you're watching this going what well, wtf is this bullshit right <laughs> This is our show. This is what we do. <laughs> so we, me and Lucy, we met many. Well, are we on week twenty three now? Thanks to the yeah. lock. The lockdown has given us many uh, fantastic things. Uh, one of the things that has given me is Lucy Orchard, and because um, I used to. Oh, sorry, Ray. Um, <laughs> Rafa's Comedy Club. Uh, it might still come back. Who knows? But um, I interviewed Lucy for a podcast for it, and, uh, and we were like, let's start a show. And this is it. This is the result. So the first half hour, so you got us till half six, waffling on about any old shit. And then we've got Claire coming on at half six to half seven, and then half seven till eight-ish. Depends how drunk I get on my single g &T. Uh, and t And if Lucy's got stuff to do, um, we're going to review... We review a, a, show, a comedy show every week, don't we? And this week it is Joan Rivers' Don't Start With Me. Uh, and I'm really looking forward <laughs> to that review as well because it. I did not realise when I suggested it, because we take it in terms to suggest it, it was my suggestion last week, did not realise. I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> it, mm. Yeah, we, we'll chat about it <laughs> in terms of ageing well. Yeah, so yeah, to, she um, she thinks that she says it, but we'll come back to the review in the third section. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone new, um, that's our show. This is what how it's going to be. And uh, oh, look at us explaining what actually happens. That's cool, isn't it? Oh my god, it's it's almost it's it was like we're Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're having a mental breakdown. <laughs> And then it's, no, as if I'm explaining the show as part of oh, the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, don't tell her that we, like, I said reviewed, that. We reviewed Doug and she did, what, 15 minutes of explaining the show before doing the show, which is part of her show. Remember that time? <laughs> yeah. No, it was weeks so, ago. It was week four, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> so I have got... I've got a gig tomorrow. Oh, oh my God. What, IRL or online? IRL. Oh, oh my God. Tell us all about it. That was so exciting. I was just chatting to someone that oh. we're going to have on in a few weeks, Clint Edwards, and he was saying about his first live gig. And my foot is just so exciting. Carry on, Lucy. Tell us all about it. Um, I have decided go hard or go home. So I'm off to Fulham to do a roast battle. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, so are you all prepared? Are you prepped? Have you, have you, right. Have you spoken to the person you're going to roast? 
Will they cry? Yes, because he's my he's my comedy brother. He's my comedy brother. So that's the reason why we're doing it. Um, it is so strange to sit on your own in a room. For people that don't know what a roast battle is, it's where you go up against another comedian and you're not very nice to each other for comedic value. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheap shop. And, uh, and barbed comments are what you need. Uh, Matthew Mellon, just to interrupt, the um, for, for those of you that are going to be listening to this on the podcast later, I, uh, um, the, the goth is back and he's written, I wonder if Joan Rivers looks less like a skeleton now that she's mouldering in her grave. I don't know, one second, I'm just getting a message from grave, uh, from, from the grave, from Joan. She could give a shit what you think. <laughs> <laughs> She's ripped, <laughs> even in death. Uh, she but doesn't maybe, care. Maybe get in touch with Melissa, she might care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for the, for the roast battle, um, I've got my comedy, uh, my comedy brother, who's on the same comedy course. I don't know if I've ever mentioned I did a comedy course. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it's with Phil Wadden. And it's so strange to sit on your own in your room with a pen and paper, thinking about somebody you really care about and trying to be as nasty as possible. Mm. It's um yeah, there's a there and 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 we've sent each other these really long texts like, oh, I'm like this, I do that, this happened to me, you know, to give each other the gift of insults, um, and to sort of it's almost like a therapy session. Like, uh, I've had a lot of jobs in my past. I don't really do well with boyfriends. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh, <laughs> who does? <laughs> I have to say, did you did you take my advice and watch some old roast battles from uh, of your? Yes, I did. Yes, I right. did. So and, you um, get it, isn't it? That it's okay to be mean because that's what they want. Yes, it's just um, like I, I've i written jokes. I'm happy with them, but they're this mean. Um, sorry for listeners, I'm holding my hands up. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're about five out of ten mean, and I need to be ten out of ten, if that makes mm. sense. I need, to, I need to take it up a little bit. Um, have you got any to like hand? I'm Have you got any to hand? Maybe, uh, maybe we could all help. Maybe everyone watching can, uh, if you come up with a premise, maybe, maybe we can all come up with some suggestions right. to be even meaner. <laughs> the other thing I right. think is okay. well, it's usually you're on the left, usually, aren't you? If I click the wrong thing, I'm a bit like. No, no, no. It just means you went in. It just means you went in first. It's absolutely. This is how it oh, used right. to be. Do you remember in the old days? When we didn't... <laughs> Remember when we were just on one did everything. Yes. <laughs> um, right, come on. Come up with a premise. We've got plenty of people watching. And Matthew Mullen, he's been a bit mean already. This is one of the jokes. This is one of the jokes that I've discarded. Ooh, but right, okay. if everybody writes it, it gives me there, because I don't want to I don't want to don't want to do my best material before the night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um Right, so, <laughs> all right, all jokes on aside, now. it's amazing to have, oh, Hugh, hi, Hugh. I've only got on. Hugh, <laughs> interrupt Just the show, in to say hello, <laughs> just hello, uh, Hugh, her, her, her background is fine, leave it, um, right, so <laughs> I've written, all joking aside, it's, all, it's amazing to have Phil in our um, comedy troupe. And on behalf of all the group, well, all the girls, um, I just want to say, none of us are ever going to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it not that bad before it happens out. Yeah, all uh, you have to do is reduce the premise because you've got an awful lot of words there. You could literally put that down to, it's lovely to have you on board, Phil. By the way, just so you know, none of the girls are going to fuck you. I think that'll be fine. You, hey, this class, one. B. class B. Phil, Phil making a strong name for himself in the comedy scene. Every woman knows his name and says, yeah, me too. <laughs> I like that. I personally like that. <laughs> what do you think, everyone? Hopefully we have some women watching as well as Angie. We usually just have um, a few men. So, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I like right, that one. This, one. this one, right, okay. Um, 
Phil can be very passionate. Once you get him started on Bristol Rovers, you never will. I don't know how it finishes. <laughs> I always leave the room to self harm. So there's one mark memory of the one lasting memory of the conversation. That one's out. That one's out. I it's don't too know, long, but it's, it's it. Phil can be very passionate once you get him started on the Bristol Rovers. Well, I can't really finish that sentence as whenever he started, I've exited the room to self harm. So at least I had one lasting memory of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I reckon the self harm needs to be at the end, end of the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. Ray says, just, I don't know. It's just, the first one down, but the second one is fine. Yeah. It's um. It's just one of those things. Like, I know his are really good. I know his are really good at me. Um. And right. it's and and I'm overthinking it, and I'm thinking, oh well, mine aren't going to be as good and i've all done that thing that i've i watched kiri doing the roast battle again and now i'm like oh never me i'm gonna hurt <laughs> oh no because, right yeah. so what are you gonna do about that because you know where you've gone wrong there don't you i've compared myself to another person and that shouldn't happen yes uh, you only compare yourself to you you're only in competition with yourself but easy said than mm -hmm. done, isn't it? You're gonna be awesome, yeah. Lucy. You're so funny. Genuinely, uh, be I'm not really if you've ever been in a three meter radius of our field, then he'll have told you he's been backpacking. Just in a, a, a dire attempt to sound travelled and relevant. But it's more likely he spent the summer in a dark room learning to Photoshop his face into spring bake videos. <laughs> <laughs> that that but I, then, then I just sat there imagining Phil learning how to do Photoshop. It is so strange. Like, I like this person. Here's a piece of paper. Let's make a spidergram about his worst features. And see if I can riff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, but it's I, when, when I did the when I did the rose battle with Shani, I try I tried not to make it too personal. You know. Yeah. So um, you can do that where it's just like something about where he lives or, you know, his town or, you know, that's what I did with Shani. Um, mind you, she she went for the juggler. She was brilliant. And in that circumstances, that's fine. Although um, I was in a, ro a roast for somebody's birthday once and I did say I did say he had a face like a. Um, uh, what did I say? Something like an old potato or something. <laughs> and uh, he did not take that very well. <laughs> oh, I think Matthew's not from uh, around here. Brilliant. Where are you from, Matthew? I know. It's like uh, it's called, um, it's like Miss Marple like... investigates, isn't it? Like the yeah. limey female version of Carol and Hardy. How well, dare first you! Of all, I'm not English. I'm we're not English. We're from Wales, actually. Should I put my accent? <laughs> on? No, I'm like, yeah, limey, not English. Indeed. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> And we're not like Laurel and Hardy at all because they were brilliant. <laughs> And, and very physical. You twat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on. If you're going to insult us, you can do better than that. Come on, Matthew. Right. Yeah. But also, where are you from? I bet. <laughs> Stay with us. Um, Talk to us about where you're from. I want to get, I want to get inside. I want to figure out what, what's wrong with you. This is, this is why I've chosen to stay single for 10 years. I can't do free counseling for another man ever again. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you're from. So I tried time. to have it. I tried to have it that I had a gig Friday and Saturday, so to make going to London worth it. Oh, nice. um, yes. But, but Saturdays fell through, which means no. Um, I they, I was trying to do a couple, and then therefore making the journey worth it. But unfortunately, they all fell through. But the roast battle is still on, so I don't know how the new rule of six sanctions are going to to work i am oh, got a fucking scooby doo as they say yeah yeah it's a bit scary really isn't it oh bloody... uh, do you know this morning you I was a bit scared up because i had loads of stuff planned and all of a sudden it's all fallen through because people are like but yeah. pe people are like off the school which is close to me their sixth form is closed because of covid um 
that was on the news today apparently my mum and dad said so it's like oh God. do you know it feels like we're sliding back into another bloody oh, lockdown so what do you think yeah it feels like it the local local I, it's <laughs> it's like um the younger people have all thought they're a little bit um untouchable and I know this is a very big sweeping statement, but it does feel as though the, the young people, um, a, yeah, um, a previous <laughs> guest, Chris Chopin, put on his, um, somebody put on his Facebook, um, face, I think it was Chris Chopin, he said that there was something that went on at Doncaster and because of that, um, it ended up reinfecting a lot of people. Did you read Chris's Facebook recently? No. <laughs> I know I should, but I haven't. But, no. it, but it was I think it was a case of they could almost pinpoint what brought the spike back to South Wales. Oh, um, God. Yeah. Uh I don't know. It's I, I just worry about saying hey, it's this one group of people because I was in the supermarket this afternoon and there are a lot of old biddies with the masks down here showing off their little nosies and getting very close. So, you know, it could be lots of things. <laughs> right. It's those contagious chins. <laughs> <laughs> it's the old folk, the chins, the hairy chins and the and the, the waddling and the oh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reach by here, Lev. And he's like, Ooh, that's not two meters. Get away from me, grandma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Right, and on that happy note, should we bring Claire in? Because we've got someone in the dining room. We've got room. a guest in the dining room. <laughs> and I yes, know there's so, so many people here um, specifically for our amazing guest. Um, yeah, oh, that's a good one. Sorry, before we bring her in, Ray says, rule of three is funny, rule of six, not so much. Good one. Right, so I'm going to big up Claire Ferguson Walker. I love her lots. Welcome to, oh, she's in the dining room. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> I don't why we do this, because the dining room is nicer than the kitchen, but we're bringing them into the kitchen. Welcome, everybody, to Claire Ferguson Walker. Oh. Hello. Oh, oh, please don't throw your pants at me just yet. Oh, the flowers. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, except that I'm having to hold my phone. Um, so I'll probably drop it a few times, uh, you know, and and move around and mostly just like check my own hair. It's that's the worst thing about these bloody meetings, isn't it? Zoom meetings or you just constantly go, oh, do I really look like that to other people? <laughs> shit, shit. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I might, I might move around a bit. Um, I'm fine. Talking of grandmas with hairy chins. Um, yeah, I felt quite a. <laughs> That quite <laughs> I felt like a cruel link to bring you up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving having a mask so that I don't have to bother plucking my chin hairs. Um, it's been great. It's just been fantastic. Straight eyebrows and straight eyebrows. Uh, yeah, fine. I'm fine. How are you all? I'm, I actually, I want an alcoholic beverage now. Now that I'm here with you, I feel like we're Brilliant. out having a drink. drink. Oh, We're that's out. good. R rather than even in the two seconds I spoke to you both, I need a drink. <laughs> it's more that yeah. <laughs> we're all out. Yay. I've got GNT. Chin hairs, <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> yeah. We all need vodka. Drink. <laughs> Vodka's good for the old water bottles, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> no one it. can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't go down too well in zumba class though you know after 20 minutes of <laughs> sipping, sipping on gin like, yeah i got my mood oh, suddenly thinking yeah. me, uh, yeah, trying to pull in a disco it's like get off my leg says the instructor honestly that's so square that's so square <laughs> sorry waffling how is no, it? No, we love it. We love it. We love a good old waffle, don't we? Yes, Everyone yeah. all right? Yeah. Yes. What it's been a right, funny way, old time. My name is... Hello, my I'm lovely. Lucy, by the way. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> lovely to meet you. How are you doing? 
You're right. I'm doing very well. She's grumping because she because I should have introduced you and I was very rude and didn't because I thought I, I Were didn't. You? Did you take the thunder? Did you steal no. the intro thunder? I think I did. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll pay for that later. Let me tell you. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, there'll be a whooping um, I... later. <laughs> like I'm... I'm in South. Um, yeah, I'm in. I'm in um, South West. I'm in Mid Devon. Um, I'm originally oh, from South Wales. What? Miles away. Wow. Yes. Hello, all the way. But over I'm, there. I'm in. A... I'm in an I'm in an area where we can be trusted to wash our hands and see people. <laughs> oh, not round here, love. Not like round here. Advice can't do anything. <laughs> I think there's going to be another lockdown a coming, isn't there? It's going to freaking happen. Oh, oh. I, think- I, can't, I quite enjoyed it, to be honest. Oh, if I'm really honest, the first bit, it was just like, oh no. All my work's fallen away. I can. Uh, I'm going to have to just stay home and not do anything. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it has got like insanely boring at times, and I, I do think I've gone a bit mad a few times. I've definitely had a couple of kind of you know blips of actual insanity, where you start kind of I don't know. Like, it's so Groundhog Day, isn't it? It's been so Groundhog Day. Kind of wake up in the morning and it's like oh. So this just been like one continuous moment. Are we being experimented on? Well, it, you know, just you can really understand yeah. how people can end up disappearing down sort of conspiracy theory rabbit holes. You know, I've been outside thinking, is this like an interactive version of Black Mirror? It's very, very well done this 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 third season. <laughs> yeah. Well I done, Charlie ha- ha- Interactive. Yeah. I have to <laughs> see that coming. I have to bring this up. Have you seen um the amazing um when I say amazing, thick, stupid thing that Noel Gallagher has said? Um, oh what a he's... wally, what a fool. Yeah. Oh uh, my god. For those of you for the listeners, especially for our one our, for our one listener <laughs> um, we because we hi. Oh, Nigeria, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm thanking somebody off, off out behind the camera is because they brought me my gin and tonic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and this is my oh, friend. Why did I not have to bring me gin and tonic? I, I used the app and then booze appeared. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> Noel Gallagher put that he doesn't agree with masks. Um, I know. And if he gets nerd. the virus, it's his own fault. And because of that, that's why he is <laughs> using private planes so he can get around the sanctions. Yeah, that's the well reason done, why I, I've yeah, not been using of, private yeah, planes. Yeah, yeah he's Murdering a knob, old he? people and contributing to climate change in one fell swoop. And a man who appears to be growing his own Busby his hair at the moment seriously have a look at it it looks like it's all like a felted version of local hair it's quite impressive <laughs> like not in an attractive way but in a way that you can sort of use him to get rid of cobwebs around your house uh, no you could uh, yeah just lean over there that's one of those cobwebs just about all he's useful for at the moment i'd say so fucking oh he's so smug as well isn't he so smug and uh yeah christ and Jed, jedward jedward have been sort of putting him in 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 his place haven't they who'd have thought that who saw that coming who fucking who fucking saw that coming for 2020 <laughs> jedward would be the moral <laughs> compass the moral compass we didn't know we needed <laughs> <laughs> Have they got the more important thing is have they got an album to promote? Because if they have Have they? <laughs> That's all it's about, isn't it? It must be. It's gotta be a publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Jed. I don't know anything become... about them at all. <laughs> yeah, Jed would have become the, the, the social media voice of reason. <laughs> um and and apparently one of the biggest jokes. One of the biggest jokes in Ireland oh. is that Jim Core is an absolute fucking nutter, and he really? loves he, he's he's a couple of steps away from signing up to David Ike's sort of uh, way really? of thinking, sort of tinfoil really? hat and lizard people. Oh, and, the um, people, Jed, the Jedward people. Jedward, yeah, Jim <laughs> Jim Core went on. Oh, wait, the, as, as um, in like the uh, cause, the as in like the cause. 
the brother of the cause. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Him. yeah, who Donna Air, Donna Air famously in the early 90s in an interview on some breakfast TV asked them how they knew each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Love it. How do I know each other? <laughs> Yeah, Jim Paul was going on about how the freedom marches were good in, in in Ireland and how people should march to not wear a mask, and and I think they oh. they, they I think Jedward said something to him and he fought fought back and I think Jedward went um, I think everyone agreed there was no point you being in the band. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh cruel, cruel mic drop moment there from from Jared. It's kind of true. It was a surplus to requirement, wasn't he, Jim Cor? Did we? What did he even play? I hope his I hope his middle name is Apple. <laughs> How <is> he? <laughs> or hard. <Yeah. laughs> Jim Hardcore. <laughs> it's more soft right. cool than hardcore, though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's just though not, is he? I I, I just remember the lead singer because she was really fit, wasn't she? What was her name? No, fit. Cole. She was beautiful. That's <laughs> Andrea. Andrea Core. Andrea. Andrea Core. Yeah. Sexy Core. Core. Look at you. They were all. all the, it's so sad. Like all the girls were gorgeous in that band, and Jim. They were. Anything yeah, really? They were. Bless him. Well, well so who remembers Jim? No, he wasn't. Oh, gutted. Can you imagine being a sibling in a family of absolute hotties and you're just there, like, not even quite making the <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, Jim. I feel sorry for Jim Cor. He no. just is a no. mask Ikey. No. Okay. <laughs> mask denier. No sympathy for Jim Cor. No sympathy for no Jim, Jim Cor. No, no, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, 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 NHS. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, it's true. When you start thinking of people being ventilated in the NHS, sympathy just goes out the window, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I just it's think true. If it's Monica, his name is James Stephen Ignatius Cor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ignatius. Oh, my Lord. Ignatius. Well, that just makes me think, you know, look as a little bit of a thing. Ignatius. I think that's the most interesting thing about him. <laughs> well, it is. What's it again? Ignatius. No, I've forgotten it already. Ignatius. Oh, is my fringe gone Ignatius, terrible. that's Sorry. a type of rock. Fringe are just great. It, it, it is. <laughs> It's like the different, it's not sedimentary, it's the kind of rock that forms just under pressure, isn't it? Isn't I don't it? know. I only know about Come it on. because of the film you What's can't Up throw Doc a fact in that and I watched not a million times. The fact. That's like a Google <laughs> moment, isn't it? I don't know, Ted. I didn't know I'd have to answer a series of follow-up questions to my one fact. <laughs> I'll say yes, then. <laughs> Sedimentary, sedimentary rock. That's like layers, isn't sedimentary. it? It's layers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I genuinely... Hi, I, viewers. I just... <laughs> Tune in to find out about geology. I can't even speak. I can't even say the word. Geology. It's geology, isn't it? The study of rocks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Um, <laughs> it, 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 a natural pause where no one knows how to follow that. No, neither do I. And over to life on Earth with Diane. <laughs> Sorry. Stop I have to drop in check a, I have to check let's, a allusion message. Let's about, let's someone let's message the show. Are we not allowed to swear, Lucy? I thought we were allowed to swear. You I are. Don't know. Someone, someone what happens if you swear to you? Have you got like a number of swears that you're allowed? Is no there idea. like a swear quota? Joe they have that, don't they? In some they films, they can hear a some swearing. Films, yeah, some films and TV programs, you're allowed some swearing. So you have to yeah. kind of think really carefully about where you F and Jeff all the way through. Because you literally you get like a quota. You get a quota of swear words. And once you go over it, I don't know, you know. And you camera can swap explodes. swear words, can't you? You can swap can you? Uh, maybe one F for two bloodies. Uh, have they got like a they've got a they've got a value system 
they've got a value system yes, with the C word being at the very top, one imagines, because no one wants to hear conservative. <laughs> hey! Hey! Brilliant. <laughs> Back, so that's hi, my... here all week and the week after. <laughs> that's my favourite joke in Hot Fuzz is, you know, the bit where they're all putting, um, <laughs> where they're all putting the swear box and he just, they just oh, keep putting yeah. 50 P's in the swear box and then, they, then he says, yeah. oh, I can't remember the joke, but I love it. That's my favourite bit. Rewatch Hot that Fuzz. Is a, and it's quite subtle. It's quite a subtle little moment, isn't it? The swear box gag in Hot Fuzz. Yeah, genius. They're genius, those boys boys aren't they they're so clever um so prominence as they did he did do a little tiny bit of stand-up at the very beginning though simon Pegg, which um have uh, honestly google it. it's worth watching his timings like absolutely spot on absolutely spot on but he clearly just yeah leapfrogged he was like yeah fuck stand up this is actually really shit i'm gonna make some films <laughs> and see you is if you want to be the big man in town, get yourself down the model village, yeah? <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, brilliant. Um, I live in a model village. Oh, Everyone Joe behaves Parker. really well. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Come on! That's like Sophia and I love anal on set. I just need everything to be in a certain place at the right time and touched in exactly the right way. Thanks. <laughs> Um, just when you said about certain movies only being allowed certain swear words, can I can oh, I be yeah. quite geeky? This is my little yeah, I, I love out, man. Oh, can we right? stop you, Lucy? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can't stop you, so geek do, away. Do we have actually a choice? Do we actually yeah. have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> no, you freaking do. When I say can I be geeky, what I really mean is shut up because I'm about to. I I'm <laughs> so, have you seen the remake of The Hustle with Rebel Wilson? Oh, no. I have. Yeah, I love it. Ooh, love is it worth watching? Okay. Right. So the people that do the yeah, ratings, I'd say so. Yeah. Right, people that do the ratings for the um, for the movies, they wanted to make it an R rating because obviously they wanted Which to say that. What? They... What is R rating? What's R? Um, oh, oh, I think it's an 18. Racy. Ooh, racy. Oh, racy. Oh, racy. <laughs> <laughs> racy. Yeah. Yeah. Racy. <laughs> she, she took the MPAA, she fought them, took them to court, and got it put down to a PG 13 because she didn't agree that the way they graded a woman's movie that used naughty words in the same way that they make grade. A more masculine environment. Really? Oh, and interesting. She and she won it. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good fact. Actually, that's a good feminism fact. That one. Yeah, yeah. she's good girl, and she rebel. She went in there yeah. with with pages and pages of film transcripts and said, "Right, in the Anchorman, they said this. We say this. How come they're a thirteen and where an R?" And she went through all the movies and she saw going, well, wow. that says pussy. And that one says ball bag. And this one says... <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, and it's true, isn't it? I think, you know, yeah, words associated with the female part probably, you know, do elicit more sort of shock, don't they? It just does. As we say, the C word, the C word. It's like sort of considered the worst, isn't it? Whereas it uses its actual meaning is is like a trustworthy old friend, apparently, or one of its original <laughs> meanings. I'm going to be one of my best friends. It comes from it, it's a Sanskrit word. Yeah, my best mate. My best mate <laughs> is a total oh, one of them. Yeah, it's a Sanskrit word, though, isn't it? it comes from kund, Kundalini. Kundalini. Kund, 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 I, I think it's a goddess actually called. Cunty, that's actually her name, and she's like, you know, the source of all <laughs> goddess Cunty, and she's like the source of all life in the universe and highly revered, and that's how the word originated. Fact, fans, that's a brilliant fact. Thank you. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah, yeah, it's an old Sanskrit word. 
<laughs> Next time I'm shouting that at an audience member, I'm like, I'm not swearing at you. <laughs> so right. Don't come for me. Not swearing. I'm referring to an ancient Muslim goddess, I'll have you know. How dare you? How dare you very much? Yeah. I've got to say, I do love my goddesses. <gasps> Brilliant. And you are a goddess. Oh, God, love a goddess. goddess Claire. Thanks. Yeah, the Venus of Willendorf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not the body of a goddess. Venus the of Willendorf. The first time <laughs> The first time your mind was seen word in print, though, it actually derives from the word quest, which was in Chaucer's Wife of Bath Ooh. from the 1800s. Oh, I love that. That's a good one. That's Did a good literary quest? fact. It, it, was, it, was, it was like quent. Q-U-E-N-T. Quent. And, um, I heard quim. I heard quim. <laughs> like quim. Close enough. But... Quivering quim. quim. I have to say, of my English A level <laughs> class, when she pointed it out, it's the, thing, I, oh, it's the only thing I remember from that lesson for that entire two year period. <laughs> that, <laughs> so you could regurgitate it now. It was all worth it, babe. It was all worth it. Definitely. I have to say, for those, I mean, if Chaucer's watching, I think your writing is awful. And the only reason, the only reason you're famous yeah. is because you're old. Yeah, one star, Chaucer, one star, one star. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, Lucy, did you not <laughs> hear <laughs> last year's Archer's version of Chaucer? The Archer's okay. last year. Oh, oh we're like going Archer's on though. a pilgrimage. Oh, we're <laughs> off on a pilgrimage. <laughs> we're pilgriming over here. Oh, Jasper, get off my milk ground. <laughs> it was the most action they had at Brookville. Oh, various northern stereotypes involving <laughs> animals. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really push people. That's the archer's way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the archer. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard? Have you heard the dreadful news? <laughs> have you heard? Actually, I've, I've hardly ever, ever listened to the Archers, but people who like it really love it, don't they? And there was—I think there was quite a controversial. There was a bit of a con. Really, someone up there loves the Archers. Oh, look, it's all we can't bloody do it. Let's do it. I love the Archers. I know it's all counterintuitive. That's why I'm like holding my face weird because yeah. Anyway, I've got a better side, and it's not the side I'm thinking it is. <laughs> Why will <was> that work? <laughs> I've, <laughs> it's like riding one of those bikes. It's like riding one of those novelty bikes that goes the wrong fucking way. Oh, I've effed. Oh, Hang on, no. I'll put some money in it. I'll Claire, donate some money to me. charity. We've been doing this for over 20 weeks, and whenever Sarah tries to work out how to point at me, she points the wrong way, and then <laughs> to reverse it, she just keeps pointing the same She's way. She's keeping doing it. Oh, she'll, point point hand. Hand. <laughs> she'll change hand and just keep pointing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I why isn't it working? Point. It's working <laughs> in real it? life. Oh, it's working. <laughs> right hand. <laughs> Because I imagine she's over there. That's why I kept doing that. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, you're just pointing off to the edge of the phone. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Don't apologise. It's really funny. So do you do – you both do stand-up. So have you had any actual physical real-life gigs at all through all of this? Have either of you actually gigged? I've had one gig. Have one you? gig in the park. In the park. Yeah, in, in in the I never, oh, I mean, it, was, it was a proper gig. It wasn't like I went, I've had a tit full of this, I'm off to the park. <laughs> and my the right, train. you lot! I'm just going to pick up my megaphone and <laughs> have some of this. Gags. Yeah. <laughs> you over there! Any married couples in the house? <laughs> Dragging a three litre bottle of cider with her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have we got any lovers in? <laughs> Anyone on the first date? <laughs> yeah. You, I you look young. You. <laughs> Stop you fingering you. that girl. <laughs> Why have I got all arches on her? Stop fingering that girl. I did that when Lady Tor Torser. We're going <laughs> on a pilgrimage so that I may learn how to please my lady more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So one gig. And what about you, Lucy? Did you manage, have you managed to do anything physical in the real world? Got, I have got a gig tomorrow, IRL. Oh. Frickin' L. No one's asking me to any gigs. It's not on. I'm, I'm actually gig jealous now. I haven't, I've hardly done anything. But then I haven't really sort of put myself particularly forward for anything. <laughs> yeah, there is that. I haven't made myself available. There is that. Oh, we're supposed to have like learned sort of several languages and oh, learned yeah. how to sort of play musical instruments, haven't we? Decorated the whole oh, house. I I the the room. I did oh, uh, can, I, can I show you my room? <laughs> Sorry, Lucy. Yeah, have you have you decorated? Oh, no, my room. Right. Have you okay. Decorated? So, so this is my my office and spare room. It's and a nice colour. Wow. It's a lovely colour. That's lovely. Hold on to your hats, okay. right? Look, yeah. This is office. Business in the front. Party in the back. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Ooh. Look at that! My favourite. I love Elsie. <laughs> Look, Sarah. Sarah, she's gone. Ah! Yes. Oh, oh no! <laughs> she's so amazed. <laughs> By my fantastic room, Claire couldn't cope. <laughs> Your majestic mint threw her out. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> well, Claire's um, has, uh, I think her internet connection hasn't been uh, fantastic. So hopefully it's just a temporary little blip and Claire will be back. I'm just cracking onto Facebook. Come back. <laughs> um, uh, Joe Pitt, if you're... Oh, shy bloom, blum, blum, blum. Um, we forgot this. Boom. What? Right. No. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the least of our worries at the moment. Everyone, oh, I'm no. hoping Claire will come back. Don't disappear. Because, oh, like, Andy's asked for a poem. Hopefully, you know. Oh, I'm, 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 I don't know what I. I have, we both have a whole week between each episode and every week we come flapping at this show like five <laughs> minutes to go. I'm picking food out of my teeth, pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> Maybe she's just like, I've had enough. <laughs> that's the least, that's the last one. I mean, Those that was, two, that was they it. don't stop <laughs> ranging on about the archers. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Andrew's asking me for a song now. Okay. Uh, I haven't done songs for years, but I'll try and think of one. Um, I'm just messaging Claire on Facebook. Come back. Um, if you, if, if anyone's got eyes on Claire, please give her a poke. <laughs> I had one sip of gin and the guest left. I, I, <laughs> I didn't realise I was that vicious a drunk. <laughs> Oh, I'm really freaking out now about tomorrow. It's been coming at me for so long. I'm now really nervous about it, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm calming myself. I'm centering myself. Um, I'm wondering whether or not. Oh, 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 she's in the Come dining back. room. Come back. Come back. Yeah, <laughs> she's in the dining room. I'll add her in. Yay. <laughs> Was that the excitement of my, my uh, decor? <laughs> It, no. it just my phone just couldn't handle it. It couldn't yes. handle the pinked. I'm not. No, everyone's frozen though, so I don't know. Can you see me moving? Am I actually? Is it happening? That's better than it was you. before. Yes, yes. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well that's cool. Hopefully, I don't know what happened there. Just a glitch in the system. Don't just worry. yeah, don't know. Deja vu, glitch in the matrix. <laughs> yeah. Don't these things happen. That me. Am I getting? No, that's me. <laughs> these things happen. These was things it you? Um, oh, that's all right. It was me. Keep Sorry in. about that. Sorry about that. Oh, right, I'm going to put my phone on silent because so, when I I'm, have to well, ask well, then. We started chatting. Sorry. So let's right. Let's, right. Let's, right. Right, let's actually ask Claire some questions. <laughs> sorry. No, no, I'm, just, I'm so sorry. I have just absolutely nervously just been Please silly. Don't. You're, you've been brilliant. You, know, you are brilliant. So I, I just like all the all the chatting. I'm just, just thinking of all the people that have come oh, to us. Oh, so, oh, I've been <laughs> awful, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go uh, for it. Ask some questions. <laughs> All right, brilliant. 
did you? <laughs> I mean, for me, in lockdown, I've either been manically creative or the well has been well and truly dry. Like, how have you found actually dealing with lockdown? Because I don't know whether it's a female trait, maybe it's a comedian's trait, but if I'm not creating, I feel guilty for wasting the time, which makes me oh, not God. in a very good mood. <laughs> And then it just doesn't help at all. And it's like this cycle that you go around. How have you found it? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I completely, completely relate to that exact same feeling. That, But I think I kind of live like that anyway, to be totally honest with you, because I am completely self-employed. So if I you know, if I'm not being creative, there is this massive, awful sense of I'm wasting time, um, which, you know, I kind of am, but I've also got two kids and, you know, a house that needs kind of doing up. So I have not completely managed to balance it all, really. I mean, I'd love to sit here and say, yes, this is the ingredient. I'm incredibly disciplined. I do these things in the morning and then that and that and that. Not at all. It's It has been an absolute mishmash. Um, I, I think the last couple of weeks, actually, so really quite recently, I have absolutely had to force myself to kind of get back into some exercise um, and some meditation. So not just doing some things that are a little bit healthy um, to, to help assuage the depression and the guilt that kind of crept up, actually. I, like I say, I was kind of enjoying it at first. And then at some point, I just realised I was feeling really glum, just so, so down in the dumps. And that definitely kind of got to a point of yeah you you kind of need to get out of your pit now love <laughs> and, and maybe do some things um so yeah I've kind of had to force myself it, it got it got to a point of like just just sort yourself out love um yeah. so I've started going back to uh dance classes which has just been absolutely amazing. And I, I can't believe I'd forgotten the difference that exercise makes, but it really can be the difference between feeling completely shit and feeling actually okay about life. Yeah. Um, so, so I would say definitely forcing some exercise in, shoehorning some exercise in has, has made a colossal difference. And I think, like you say, when you're feeling crap, when you're feeling guilty, when you're feeling you know, negative, bad feelings, the last thing you feel like doing is being creative. Um, so I don't know about you, but I do really need to be, you know, sound like a bloody diva, you know, I need my white room and my lilies and my basket of kittens. Everything needs to be just so, so that it can flow. <laughs> Otherwise the muse does not flow. And I, I think I do need to have you know, a certain frame of mind to be able to get creative and trying to force creativity when when you're, you know, when everything else is falling down, it just doesn't work. So I've absolutely had to, yeah, put some healthier actions in place. Um, and I have managed to do a little bit of new work, which is amazing. I've written some new poems. I've started working musically again, which is amazing i haven't done any music i'm a singer and i haven't done anything for crikey nearly two and a half nearly three years there's been a really really long time and i'm just going to show off now to our one viewer um <laughs> hi viewer i'm showing off i i collaborating do you remember dodgy do you remember the band dodgy it's yeah, good yeah. enough for you it's good enough for me i'm friends with the lead singer of, of dodgy nigel clark and we're about to work on on releasing some tracks together so that's really exciting news and that's only just happened actually like literally the last kind of week or so um and i think that's come about because as i say i'm feeling you know i've got a little bit more serotonin a few more endorphins flowing around the blood system um than <laughs> alcohol <laughs> <laughs> serotonin to alcohol levels you know have become yeah. have become more healthy so yeah that's a really long-winded answer i could have just gone yeah i've been fine <sighs> just getting up <laughs> doing some things how about you <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. it's fine i love a long-winded answer 
and uh, and oh, also I think you know it's so refreshing to hear people say yeah I've I've you know I've just felt fed up and I'm getting out of it you know oh, and, and yeah, choosing to get out totally. of it you know, yeah. I was beating myself up, like, oh, my God, when the lockdown first started, I was like, shit, no, you know, I, I live alone. Uh, and the reason why I'm so busy all the time is to stop myself from thinking. And I'm like, no, I don't yeah. want to be thinking about things. Things will come up. Oh, uh, I, 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 I think it's absolutely the plight of, honestly, I don't know many comedians who don't... Um, you know, suffer with bouts of depression. I think it really goes hand in hand. And I, 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 I've definitely got this theory that, you know, comedians tend to think really deeply about lots and lots of things. I think our brains tend to work in a certain kind of way. We make connections in a certain kind of way. And often we use comedy as a, as a processing mechanism and as a coping mechanism. You know, it's very much the alchemy. It's the gold that comes out of the alchemic process of of dealing with life's crap, isn't it? Um, you know, and in order to kind of have that process, maybe you need to feel life's crap as well. And I, I, I honestly, I don't know any comedian that doesn't suffer from bouts of depression. Um, and I think the older I've got, the more I've come to realise it isn't necessarily something you get over. You know, it's something that you just have to learn to live with. And the really difficult thing, I suppose, about depression is that, you know, the things that you need to do to get yourself back better tend to be the things that feel incredibly hard to achieve. You know, like you say, you've spiralled down into this place where, yeah, you know, even even getting up and doing your washing feels like a mammoth, yeah. mammoth task. And I think once things have got to that point, we do need to get better at asking for help. And that's definitely been something I've this has suddenly gone from comedy, isn't it, into a into a serious <laughs> into a, when, when into you're a lying, serious when I'm, when I'm yeah, in my bed it. feeling depressed and I'm just like, I don't want to get up, I don't want to brush my I mean I never want to brush yeah. my fucking hair. But for argument's sake, pretend I do. So like, yeah. <laughs> like like, say when I'm lying there feeling depressed, and I'm like, why can't I have the depression that John Robbins has that gets him a bloody Perrier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Nick, why haven't I got Robin Williams-style depression that has me kind of manically bouncing off the walls and just being absolutely hilarious? Yeah, it, it's it's true. that it, You know, the worst kind of depression is that one where you just, you feel like you can't be asked. You just feel like you like, can't be bothered. Can't really... Why can't I have the good depression? It's like laziness. It's so it feels like laziness, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 I, I, it, it, yeah. It, does. it manifests as laziness often, and that's hard because then you beat yourself up about it. You, you know, you just feel like you're lazy and useless. So, you know, and obviously the the worse you are, the harder you are on yourself, the more you're going to feel yeah. shit. So it's yeah. it, it's definitely about learning to be kinder to yourself during those patches and honestly reaching out for a bit of help has been that in itself has been a real eye opener this lockdown i'm really proud and i've got i've definitely kind of recognized i've got a bit of a problem with that the whole oh, i'm fine i'm fine everything's fine 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 fine, fine. You know, <laughs> Um, and actually reaching out to a few trusted friends, honestly, to literally say, can you help me come and clean my kitchen? Because things have got on top of me and I literally can't face it. And it's got to a level where I'm just drowning in grime and, you know, ooh, help. And it's and it's embarrassing. You know, you have to get past the shame of, of, of people coming in and seeing you like that. Um, and, I, and I've done it, you know, I've reached out for some real help through this lockdown at points. And honestly, that in itself has massively, massively assuaged my own mental health problems because I just feel supported. And I think often, you know, you feel depressed because you are you feel psychologically isolated. You feel psychologically alone. And I mm. think that we, as much as we you know, the stigma is lifting um, on mental health issues and we are talking about it more. There's still stigma there. There's still stigma yeah. there. And, you know, I tell you, as a, as a mum and, a, you know, a housewife, my mm -hmm. God, the stigma of having a messy house, it's huge. It's huge. People become so ashamed of it, you know, yeah. and, and feel that they kind of absolutely have to clean everything up before they can have people over. 
And actually, mm. if it's really got on top of you and you're really struggling to get everything tidy, you're never going to get anyone over. And of course, the thing that's going to help you feel better is to have company. So it becomes a real cycle. So, yeah, reaching out to friends and saying, help me clean has been yeah. amazing. And and bless my friends who've come and helped me. <laughs> <laughs> literally cleaned my windows that ended up looking like an elephant had come all over them honestly just you know jobs like that that I just never get around to yeah <laughs> it makes it you feel good if, my somebody, if somebody asks you to do something and as a, if a friend asks you to do something you're like yeah of course you're my friend and it makes you feel totally. valued no matter what it is exactly friends, you're exactly. there isn't it but it's, it's easy to say if you're the one asking for the help. But it's to remember that it, as there's, well. There's definitely an art to it. There's an art to it. Exactly. When you think, when you roll, reverse those roles and think, well, how are you going to feel if someone asks you for help? Exactly. You're going to feel like, oh, bless, you know, they've come to me and it almost yeah. feels a bit special, actually. So, yeah, yeah, it's so worth remembering that. It yeah. really is. But, um, yeah, Be begging people for sex isn't quite the same. No. <laughs> Club. <laughs> yeah oh god yeah i've got magazines please just i'm dying to get laid yeah yeah i, I definitely had like the horny patch actually i definitely went through like kind of being on heat in the sort of you know the bit of spring time that we went through my sap did rise at one point I, I kind of had that like real sort of you know when cats are in heat and they sort of stick their tail up and just go like that I, I had I definitely had a bit of a moment of that uh yeah and and kind of and did sort of reach out and did some sort of flirty messaging with people and and yeah Christ note to self don't ever fucking do that again seriously it's um during a time where you know a lot of people are probably feeling quite lonely and frustrated and sexually frustrated don't put your milkshake out there unless you're seriously willing to have <laughs> can, a just say, can you give a us voice. can Absolutely you give us terrifying. Tip on how yeah, just, you got rid of the queue how did you get rid of the queue of men i, I am not even doing i have had to just go block 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 oh stop fuck i'm not even joking it did oh, at one point no. i was just like oh, this has got really ridiculous yeah 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 so yeah absolute sort of warning warning there really be really careful of kind of putting the <laughs> rugs in. you shouldn't stick the red light on seriously so um what you're saying yeah. is you took your milkshake out of your yard <laughs> <laughs> i spread my milkshake wide and far <laughs> and yeah and it, and it didn't always it, it just it, it just got intense it just got really intense what felt kind of safe behind a screen um suddenly didn't feel very safe when people were like i'm gonna come and see you i'm coming to see you i'm coming to see you as soon as lockdown's over i'm coming it's just like no actually please don't i, I made a, mis I made a terrible mistake <laughs> I made a terrible mistake. Please. Yeah. I take it all back. I am in fact. We're just having a bit of fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can I ask you some <laughs> questions from the viewers? Because yeah. I did ask earlier and we've had some lovely questions. So I'm just going back up the thing uh, to make sure Brilliant. we haven't. Uh, um, and I will just warn you, we've had a couple of people asking for a poem, but I know I haven't asked before the show, so I don't want to put you on the spot, but I've had a couple of people asking oh, for a poem. That's so sweet. That's and last we're very much that's about sweet. the consent, and we hadn't pre yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, that's <laughs> fine. I'm like suddenly sweating, looking like <laughs> I've got anything that I can grab and write something. <laughs> I might I, try and think. I have, I've written, I mean, I put a new poem up on Facebook the other day. So, so that, that doesn't feel like a new sort of surprise at all. And I have been working on something very, very, very brand new. Um, but I could, let me think. I'll let me think on that. I might, I might, I might, I might, I might give one at the end. If I can go and find my poetry book, I might write one yeah. out. I oh, really said knock you. one out. Knock one out. <laughs> Knock one out of the park, oh, it's uh, fine. Yeah. So, Andy That's Belcher. Angie! Hi, babe. Angie. 
has is has asked have you ever been backstage with a wanker whose politics <laughs> are dire? we've all been backstage with a wanker uh not always louis ck boom boom um have you ever, have you ever been backstage with a wanker whose politics are diametrically opposed to yours and if so how did you deal with it we've so been backstage yes. with some of the answer to that is is yes, I have been. And I, I've been backstage with somebody actually who was on a tour specifically for a very well known politician who nearly got into power but didn't. Um Ooh. Jeremy Corbyn. Someone who'd been asked to go on the, the JC for PM tour, um, who blatantly didn't like Jeremy Corbyn. Um but who kind of, you know, agreed to go on the tour because it was obviously quite a high profile tour and there were some really big names. So they just completely shoehorned themselves into something. But we're being really vocal about the fact that they actually really didn't like him. Um, and this is actually quite a well-known comedian. I mean, I'm not going to, I really won't, won't no, mention no. the names, but yeah. um, I, I won't. And it's no. interesting because this, this is the absolute truth. I think had they been lesser known, this is an awful thing for me to admit, but it's honestly true. I think had they been lesser known, I probably would have seriously taken them to task. But I actually felt quite intimidated simply by the fact that they were quite high profile themselves. So I just sort of just sat there probably with my mouth open, like, uh, okay, <laughs> wow, yeah. you're literally here on this tour and you don't actually like him. Um, so kind of just politely listened Um and 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 tried to kind of you know see it from their perspective. So I wasn't mm. like a completely gutless flip flopper. I tried to see it from their perspective and just gently, gently put my own opinion forward that was yeah completely, completely diametrically opposed. Um, <laughs> do you know what? No, it was it actually man. was. Yeah, it was. It was a. It was a fella. Yeah. It was a man. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Would you, Adam and Eve? Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if I've ever met any absolute kind of full-on right wingers, um, where I've been at gigs, or who've you know people who've been really, really vocal about things that are just like, wow, that's that's really not okay. Um, yes, actually, I have. Although I wouldn't say that it was a, it was political. The one time I can remember being backstage with somebody who was an asshole, he literally was sitting there with with his sort of other mates. I was quite new on the circuit at the time, and he just started quite loudly discussing the fact that he just didn't think women were particularly funny, <gasps> and that he'd oh, never really God. seen funny female comedian. It's just extraordinary, isn't it? You just can't believe that that would happen. You know, I, I was really surprised by the comedy circuit when I first got involved. I really, really was. I just, I genuinely thought, hey, great, you know, we're all funny. It's going to be the friendliest bunch of people ever. Hey, fellow jokers, let's all be friends. Um, and it's, I, I haven't found it to be like that at all. It's taken me a long time to find people in the comedy circuit that I really like and really trust. I, I've found it to be incredibly competitive at times and and really catty and one of the only times where I have absolutely felt my gender has been oh you've pressed mute Claire you've pressed mute oh I'll try and move in uh, oh yeah no no Claire yeah, you have to press on mute there we go oh no it's unmuted again oh, there we go there you go all right, hang on. There, right. We can hear you now. If you... No, it, no it, I think it's Claire's it. end. Okay. If you can press unmute on your end. Oh, oh, it keeps it keeps muting again every time she every time she like she's not here. Claire, every time that. <laughs> um, so annoying. Uh, I can't unmute your guest because they chose to mute themselves. Hmm. Bigger. I don't know what to say. Um, 
<laughs> message her? I don't know. <laughs> um, it might it might be her internet. I don't know, but it was so strong since she came back. Yeah, it was really good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it could be. She's Claire's frozen now as well, so it might be worth going out and coming back in again, maybe. Oh, such around. a good conversation too. Yeah, she's come through. It's my fucking internet, she says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we can see a smile. <laughs> ah. Well, can I just say, viewers and listeners, guess what? It wasn't Lucy Orchard's internet that fucked up this week. Can we just do a victory lap around the living room? Woo woo! <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is our show, so I shouldn't be happy that Claire's having internet troubles, but there's a little bit of Schadenfreude inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> like, wasn't me. Hang on, she's oh. coming back. She's back here. She's coming back. Fingers crossed. Oh, nearly. Oh, my word. I'm going to have a quick read of the new comment. Um, who's got a question for when we get Claire back? Oh, right. I'm going to answer Right. Here we are. Yay. Hello. And we're back once again. Like yeah. Again, yeah. Master. We can hear you. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking internet. Honestly, I just went out and I just gave the hamster wheel another injection of adrenaline to keep them running, to keep them going. Seriously, so can't get stuff. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then oh, in the wild. Connection. It's a little bit <laughs> underwater in there. I don't know whether or not um, if there's anything you can do from that position or whether it's just cope. <laughs> right, hang on. Any better? Ooh, that's yes. better. That better. Is yes. it? Oh yes. shit. You mean I can't talk to you through one bottle of water? <laughs> right, what were we talking about? I can't even remember. We were talking about sexism on the comedy circuit, weren't we? And meeting oh, horrible yeah. people. Oh, Angie yeah. Belcher asking a juicy, a juicy bit of gossip question. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Doing. It's taken me a long time to uh, kind of realise that you just absolutely have to do it for the audience you have to do what you're doing for the crowd you are not there necessarily to please your peers or to compete with your peers but my god isn't there there isn't there some competitive energy in the comedy world it's freaking shocking and i think sometimes the anti-woman thing i have got this theory I think often a lot of guys get into comedy because it's going to sound so awful, and not all comedians, of course, but I think that there is a percentage of male comedians who become funny or become comedians because they've kind of discovered that being funny tends, you know, you can kind of get women. It's, it's, yeah. it's a way of pulling women if you're really funny. It is, it is, it is. And so if you're there on that side in that territory, you're kind of in the wrong place. So some biological thing just is like, mm, wrong. You meant to be over there for me to pull, not here. This man place. I honestly, I think it triggers a slightly caveman response. Not all men, not all men. Obviously, I have to call yes. out. Not all men, and not, not all, all people who identify as men or as cavemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. And I tell you, what, I don't know if you've done any all female lineups, but the bloody the energy is so different to the all male lineups. So different. It is. We're so it is. It is. We're all there going. It is. Can it's really it's different. Yeah. And it's yeah. It's lovely. I love Bigging it. Bigging each other up. Bigging each other yeah. up. There's a much more of a sense of camaraderie. I've found. Yeah. Definitely. 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 So yeah, I've done. I've done some funny women shows, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of got put off the comedy circuit a little bit because of it, a little bit because of that 
that kind of constant feeling of competitiveness going on. Um, but I'm actually, I'm kind of hungry again to get back into it. Mm. I am. I'm, I think in a way it's taken lockdown. It's taken to have everything removed, everything kind of taken away to suddenly go, oh, I actually quite appreciated that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to do Edinburgh next year if it's on. I am so oh, up for doing yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I remember when we chatted before about your Edinburgh. Um, I don't know if you yeah, want to remember. Yeah. And uh, it just sounded horrible. But uh, I love you. Yeah, your it was so horrendous. It was brilliant. Oh, so bless your heart. Thank you, my darling. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I kind of got bored of it in the end. I, I actually genuinely got bored of my own show. It's like, oh, crying out loud. I've heard this so many times. So I kind of just had to shelve it because I wasn't enjoying it anymore. But thank you very much. But yeah, my my first Edinburgh experience, I mean, oh, dear God, uh, just so naive. My first ever Edinburgh experience is I had an incredibly lucky break with Phil Jupiters, basically. Um, ah. and, and when I know it's really lucky. I met him at a literature festival that happens quite close to where I live. Um, and we got on really well. And I, I just totally flirted my way into his good books. I absolutely totally admit that I just used flirtation to open some doors, um, which is a terrible thing to admit, but it's the absolute truth. And it worked. It worked. I, he offered me he offered me a gig um supporting him in his edinburgh show and at that point i you know i had only just started performing really wow. i mean i'd written poetry and stuff for a long time i i think you know my biggest gig at that point was like you know an open mic pub night in Carmarthen. i'm not joking so f from going to that to suddenly being offered this huge show in edinburgh was i mean exciting massive massive learning curve um and and they really were big shows you know he, he was doing the free fringe so it wasn't even ticketed so hundreds and hundreds of people in this venue the jam house probably up to you know six or seven hundred people per gig you know and at that point i'd you know i'd performed to about 10 people and felt like that was bloody loads um so talk about kind of in at the deep end but but it gave me this completely false sense of like Edinburgh's easy. My God, I don't know why anyone makes a fuss. Jesus, you just turn up and there's like hundreds of people waiting for you. I, I I just yeah, I was like you know after the very first gig, like instantly wearing sunglasses and like don't speak to me. You can speak to my agent. I'm clearly a famous person now. Out of my way. <laughs> absolutely went to my head like totally totally immediately it really did it was awful and um but but I completely got my comeuppance because when I took my first show up there honestly just I, I don't know what I was thinking but I had no genuine experience of what it was like to be basically a nobody and promote a show to thousands and thousands of people amidst thousands of other kind of unknown people I hadn't ha actually had that experience so I sort of thought oh you just advertise it on Facebook and you'll be you know <laughs> turn them away I'm very sorry but you didn't get here soon enough it's already full and of course not like that at all you have to be absolutely selling yourself and I discovered I was actually really shit at it that's it's without a doubt that's a that's a type of performance in itself, and it's a type of skill in and of itself, who actually Angie is fantastic at, and I've really learned a lot from Angie Belcher. She's brilliant, she's just fearless, and she enjoys going up to people and selling herself. I am not at all, I found it really embarrassing. And you know, I just, yeah, and I too. felt like I just didn't really have anything spectacular to sell. Do you know what I mean? And, and that year, honestly, the, the thing that stands out for me, there was this show called Follow the Fawn, and it featured this phenomenally beautiful camp sort of gay performer dressed up as a fawn, glitter all over his nipples and beautiful like you know prosthetic makeup with all these women in like thonged bikinis following him promoting this show which was obviously like this like amazing burlesque cabaret show and I just felt like in my mind that was the level that was the that was the benchmark of of amazing that was happening at Edinburgh that year and next to that I just felt 
it just felt like I was offering people a turd sandwich compared to that. It's like, <laughs> why would you want to come and see me? It was like, do you want to come yeah. see some poetry? I'm afraid there's no glittery nipples. So why would you even bother? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was just a shit experience. So I was crap yeah. at selling it. So I hardly got anybody in. So on mm. a lot of days, there were just, there were no shows. And of course, the build up to Edinburgh. Everyone's so excited that you're going, you know, kids made a massive fuss. We all made, I did like a big fundraiser before I went and raised a load of money. So I went up there feeling so kind of full of promise and this is it. I'm going to be discovered and it's just going to be amazing. Of course, you know, five days in, yeah, exactly. Five days in, you're just having a nervous breakdown, sort of sliding against the window of a kebab shop. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> my dad is right. I have not come to anything in my life. <laughs> yeah. terrible really depressing and it but it really knocked me it really did it totally knocked my confidence I, I really had to work hard to kind of get back on you know on the unicycle of comedy after that um because it was fucking humiliating it was just so humiliating yeah and people yeah. messaging me while I say how's it going how's it going I'd be like I'm yeah. in a room and nobody has turned up at all. So that's yeah. how it's going. That's how it's going. <laughs> it's day going. It's, day. I think it's humbling. It's, pain, it's painful. It is painful. Humbling is the word. Yeah. Humbling is the I, word. I had a very similar experience and it was until I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. And thank God I was only there for a week because I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like you. I was like, I've only got, I had a 15 seater room, 15, one five, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can get 15 people in, no problem. Oh, my God. It was having to stand on the street. And I had a poster with my face on it, as everyone says, but I've got my face on this poster. Me and my sexy biker, as Lucy calls it. The one I'm like, you know, and Sean was like, <laughs> 10 years old. And then people are like, is that you? You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh. they're like, uh, don't think that's you, is it, love? And it, and it was just humiliating. And I used to go to, I had one show where I was like, I can't face doing it. And because it's PBH, you have to put on a show even if no one turns up. I literally stayed to. in the pub. Yeah, you have to. Going, Fuck it. I hope no oh. one turns up. I can't face it. And then, and then, I can't face it. Yeah. my friend and the guy I fancied and I, and, I, and I was flirting with both bloody turned up. I was ashamed. <laughs> and my friend was like, what is it? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's what it's like. It's so uh, humiliating, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. know. And you have to try and style it out. You have to try and style it out in front of people you fancy. The same thing happened to me. A couple of people who I quite fancied turned up and there's like absolutely no one there. Oh god. And the other thing that fucking happened, I got like a <laughs> dreaded fringe flu. I just got oh, ill almost yeah. as soon as I got there. I remember like getting off the train and like my glands came up as my feet sort of hit the platform. It was just like, oh, I feel fucking shit. And of course, <laughs> you know, doing a spoken word thing, the last thing you need to go is your fucking voice, isn't it? But yeah, but yeah. by about day six, I was really struggling to talk. I mean, I sounded like Barry White. I mean, I sound a bit like Barry White anyway, probably really sort of <laughs> manly. I was down here somewhere. Honestly, oh. my voice was just going and going and going. And at one point, halfway through a show, it, it did. It just completely gave out. And it was, you know, when it could, you know, when your voice totally goes and you're like, yeah. that. Like, oh, fuck. And yeah, that happened. That happened. And I, I couldn't carry on. And they were all just, oh. yeah. I, I got actually the most money that day, which is really awful because oh. they were obviously just giving me money, for, you know, sympathy, sympathy <laughs> money. So, oh, so sorry. Good. It, Never you mind, can love. Spend that money in the go and though, treat yourself. Go and treat <laughs> yourself to some lozenges. Thanks. <laughs> just start to ca carry on in interpretive dance. It was awful. It was just so awful. <laughs> <laughs> I need therapy. They should offer therapy post Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there should be post Edinburgh therapy I mean, for sure. Post Edinburgh therapy group. Yeah, you are yeah. still worthy. You are yeah. still somebody. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just listen. Oh, Maria, Maria Bamford has got this thing on Audible. It's got a, like um, a self a, a parody of a self help book, but it is accidentally also a self help thing. I think everyone should listen to that. She's brilliant. Uh, brilliant. 
so good. But um, oh, brilliant, did, yeah. Did um, Hugh have a question, Lucy? I know you were. Yeah. We can ask that before we disappeared. <laughs> The wonderful Hugh said, Claire, do you still define yourself in three words as ambitious, kind and bewildered? And I'm going to add, or were you just using three, wo <laughs> three words because you were lost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. OK, definitely. Yeah, I would say, I mean, my ambition is coming back. Can you still hear me or have I gone like a Dalek? Yeah. Yep. Disappeared. Perfect. I'm there. That's good. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I'd say my ambition is coming back. So, yeah, I would say ambitious. Um, oh, what other word? Friendly. Um, uh, yeah. Definitely friendly. I really want to be friends with people when I meet them. That I really do. Um, and confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I'm ambitious so friendly and confused <laughs> i got it i can't let this slide so you've gone from ambitious kind and bewildered to ambitious friendly and confused <laughs> <laughs> i've obviously been influenced by his words that was just like a thesaurus, wasn't it? I just gave no, the same three words back, the same meaning, slightly different. It's just, yeah, the thesaurus mind kicked in there. Um, <laughs> I, I am confused a lot of the time. I am, I am. The modern world confuses me. That is, that's honestly true. I, I think mm. the last couple of years, I, I've, gen I mean, I'm over 40 now. I <laughs> know, I don't look at, do I don't fucking answer that. Um, I, I, I've realised I'm a bit of a dinosaur in some ways, you know, and I would love to be much more on it in terms of, of, the, of using technology, of utilising everything that's out there. I'd love to have a podcast. I'd love to do all of these things. And I just, I actually do feel a bit bewildered and a bit confused by modern tech a lot of the time. And I, I have this thing that I, I really can't stand it in myself. It really frustrates me. If I don't, if I can't suss something out really quickly, I'm like a child. I'm like a sort of three-year-old that can't tie its laces yet. I just go, oh, fuck it then, I'm not fucking doing it. And we'll kind of <laughs> throw it out of, you know, throw my toys out of the pram. And it's one of my worst traits is, is mm. that I really struggle to learn new things. Um, mm. You know, it's like I know that I'm good at the things I'm good at, if that makes sense, but but actually, I, there's loads of things I want to be able to do. And, and I, that, that's my goal, actually, for next year, or maybe even the rest of this year, or maybe even just the rest of my life, is to yeah. just really stop getting so angry when I can't do things and just take the time to be patient to learn new things. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a ghastly trait. It's a ghastly trait and one I've definitely got off my dad. My dad was like it. Really, sort of, he, was, he was really arrogant, my father, and he wanted to be brilliant at everything and he hated the idea of being a beginner at anything. That, that really, you know, he, he was so sort of arrogant. And I don't think I'm, I'm not arrogant in the same way. I can totally confess and admit that I'm shit. <laughs> but that response, <laughs> like there's books and books of things written about things I'm shit at. But there's, you know, the response, the same response of frustration is still there. And I'd really like to deprogram my mind. Actually, I watched this amazing thing about reprogramming the human mind. I watched it the other day on YouTube. I found it absolutely fascinating. It was talking about how our subconscious conditioning like our mapping that, that that gets laid down from when we're really quite young is most that's mostly what what drives us that's mostly what what we're kind of working with and that actually the way that we deprogram ourselves of our negative things is just to to lie to yourself just lie to yourself just tell yourself that you are not the things that you that you are that you literally kind of fake it to, it's a fake it to make it kind of idea but that your subconscious does not know the difference so if you are constantly telling yourself i'm really happy i'm a really happy really patient 
amazing person who picks things up really, really quickly. And you keep telling yourself that over and over again, actually, it will start to embed itself into your subconscious and you'll start behaving in that way. And I, I'm really giving that a go at the moment, this kind of reprogramming of, of myself. So that's probably been the most useful and positive thing I've done thus far, I think, actually. Apart from yeah. asking for help, is the, is the personalised deprogramming program I have myself on. <laughs> Wake up in the morning. I am happy. I am happy. I'm really happy. There's a <laughs> TED Talk with Amanda Palmer about the power oh, of asking. Yeah, the art, which, the, the art of is, asking. The ask of asking, which is fantastic. So many of our viewers are having trouble. I know that we had um, ran, Random Maestro also really picked up with your comments about getting bogged down by not tidying up and asking your friends. So Random Maestro, if you ever get a chance, go on, go on YouTube, on Tinternet, and look at The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. <laughs> I don't know why I went northern on that one. Um, Amanda Palmer, I, the art of Amanda asking. Amanda Palmer, you know Andy Palmer, she's always asking something, she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is known as a big asker, isn't she? Bless her heart. I've got, actually, I've got, a, can I, am I allowed to do a famous name drop? I've actually, like, she came to stay with me. Um, but it, honestly, it's honestly true. And it's really interesting, right? There's a real connection here. I saw that video before I knew about her music or any anything else that she did, um, because I was doing I was doing mentoring at the time about business startup, and actually was starting to talk about crowdfunding in the early days. And of course, her whole video is about the fact that she crowdfunded um, yeah. her first well, it's not her first album, but one of her albums. She got dropped, didn't she? Her and the Dresden Dolls they were dropped by their record label, and she decided to crowdfund her next album and made it was an absolutely enormous amount of money wasn't it it was like half yeah. a million or something just from crowdfunding wow. it so she became this real expert on crowdfunding and asking for help and um so I got introduced to that video because I was starting to do stuff about crowdfunding and found it it is absolutely amazing it's a really moving video and she's a really intriguing and interesting character so I kind of got into her music a little bit and then when I was in Edinburgh having my really awful time, my eldest daughter sent me um, a video by her, one of her songs, which has become one of my favourite, favourite songs. And it's a song about or becoming the person that you were always meant to become. It's such a moving song. It's so moving. It's all about her. One day I'll lose weight and one day I'll do this and one day I'll do that. But suddenly I realise I already am the person I was always meant to be. I found it incredibly, incredibly moving. And mm -hmm. and I remember at the time in Edinburgh thinking, you know, I would love to meet Amanda Palmer. She just she's just really, really incredible. And uh, always set this in put it out into the universe of like, I am going to somehow come to meet Amanda Parr. I really want that to happen. I really want it to come to pass. Um, and, and then actually just ended up becoming friends with Andrew O'Neill, the comedian who supports Amanda sometimes on tour. And two years ago, um, yeah, he, he contacted me to say that they were gigging in Carmarthen um, and they were looking for a place to stay. And could they please come and stay? So obviously I went, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to be busy that night. No, obviously I was like, oh, my God, yes. Yes, you can. Um, yeah, and they came to stay. And I got the fucking day wrong, right? I thought they were coming on a certain day. And then Andrew messaged me to say, is everything still all right for tomorrow? At which point, obviously, with my messy house, I was like, holy titty fucking shit. No, it isn't. And went home. And I actually cleaned manically for about, 72 well it wasn't 70 hours because there aren't 72 hours between a day is there 24 <laughs> hours straight i stayed up all night and cleaned my house from top to bottom and sort of had a slight nervous breakdown actually yeah. so that when they visited i'd sort of gone mad i actually yeah. gone a bit mad but amanda palmer came to the house and um <laughs> yeah and i met her and she was really nice she was really down to earth and I was kind of expecting her to be this crazy party person, 
um, <laughs> but but she wasn't. She wanted an early night. But I I did have to take her around the house just because I thought <laughs> if you don't go around and have a look, what the fuck was the point of me yeah. cleaning my skirting board at four o'clock in the morning? Please, Amanda, yeah. look look and observe the lack of spider webbing. Through yeah. my lounge. Um, but yeah, amazing experience. And she took oh, loads yeah. of photographs of my sculptures and sent them to Neil Gaiman, her husband, who was a massive, massive influence on me as a teenager. Yeah. And he messaged back to say that they were absolutely amazing. So yeah, that was a really lovely, oh. lovely experience. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, off, that's me showing off. Story, as beautifully as Dawn French telling the story of the Queen Mother coming to her house. That was really yeah. lovely. <laughs> yeah, that was in her book, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, though, having Amanda Palmer around. That's, I'll have to check out her music. I don't yeah. think I've ever heard her music before. It's really, oh, it's great. It's great. Start with Map of Tasmania. Right, I'm making a note. Yeah, Map of, right, of Tasmania. Because I'd like that um, what, that that YouTube that you were how to deprogram yourself. So I'm after the link for that. I love all this stuff. I love it. Mm. One thing that so, really that is so helpful, isn't it? I think YouTube's amazing. I'm constantly, you know, if it wasn't for YouTube and Instagram, I mean, I'm currently doing whole food plant based diet, and uh, I really feel like this is the way I'm going to eat for the rest of my life. I feel so good on it, and I'm losing weight and all the rest of it. But also, one thing, a really weird thing Ooh, that really... are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> do you really want to know? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Buy, buy the starch solution. And, well, don't buy it, actually. Literally, every single meal, half your plate is the low calorie, let them, low calorie density. So I'm plugging my laptop in. Low calorie density veg. Mm. So all your veg that's a hundred calories per pound. And I could tell you, I'll message you, I'll give you a shitload of information if you if you want. Yeah, do, do but, it. Uh, oh, I do. you look fantastic. You look great. Oh thanks, Bill. Glowing thanks, isn't she? That's glowing isn't she? <laughs> That's the gin and the, and the makeup. No, honestly, I've lost, I've easily lost as well, 21 pounds, easily. Normally, I struggle wow. to lose a spoon and it all goes back on again the minute I look yeah. at some chocolate. And also, and it's coming off, oh, it's staying same, yeah. I'm not hungry, I'm stuffing myself. When, if ever I'm hungry, I'm like, right, I eat a shed load of, it's the low calorie density veg. That's half your plate, wow. my plate is massive. And the other half wow. then is a starchy veg, like potatoes or, um, well, I tend to eat potatoes, but you can butternut squash or um, yeah, starchy you can potatoes. Pasta, but as low, the, as low process as possible and no meat, no dairy, you know, it's basically vegan, but, um, and, but it's, it but is. You're full, but you're full. That's the main thing, isn't it? It's being, it's feeling yeah. full. Yeah, yeah. The problem with, yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't handle being hungry at all. Just get, I get yeah. really angry. I get hangry. Me too. So ha Me hanger. Too. Do you get hangry? Yeah, no, I do. I really get really snappy. I, I was in a work meeting once, and I lived in Newbury, and on a Friday we had to go to Watford, which was a good three and a half hours away, right? So I would pick up a McDonald's breakfast and eat it at the meet. Just I'd be stuffing it in at the meeting because you know I'm like oh at you know, half eight. Yeah. And my manager yeah. took me to one side and said you you can't eat in the meeting. And I was like you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't stop me from eating. Not thinking. Well, yeah. maybe I should eat it on the way. Fucking quit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you have a resignation in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got an answer to that. I fucking I quit. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, all same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to eat straight away in the morning. Some people can't eat yeah. first thing, can they? I, I just, yeah. I don't understand those yeah. people. <laughs> oh, I, I don't understand you. You're from another planet. I'm like, eat now, food now. After my, after I've now. told myself I'm happy. After I've told myself I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> morning. I'm out. happy. I am a happy, tidy, amazing, <laughs> friendly person. And now I must consume. <laughs> if, I've, if I've got paid breakfast with the hotel room, nothing is stopping me from having that breakfast. I can oh, eat yeah. 
I can eat a breakfast if it comes with the room. But usually, oh, first thing in the morning, coffee and silence. Is yeah, coffee I mean. and silence. Oh, I dream of that. <laughs> coffee and silence. I love it. It's a good name for an album, isn't it? I'm releasing the <laughs> album. Yeah, it's called Coffee and Silence. Yeah, I like that. But, but every morning when I wake up and um, I brush my teeth, um, I splash my face with water three times. And wow. every day I say, I am brave, I am strong, and I can do this. And that is oh, my starter. Nice. That's yeah. my starter mantra every single day. Brilliant. It is a case of. It is a case of fake it till you make it. I cannot, I can't, I can't agree with you more strongly. You know, tell your face. If you tell your, if face. You tell your tell that face. face. That's a good, yeah, tell your face it's fine. Tell your face. And it's do. got this and it can do whatever it wants within legal reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're being trolled, guys. We're being trolled. I wasn't going to no. mention the troll because it's a shit troll. He's not even trying. That's pathetic. Oh, um, it's pathetic. It's we haven't. He's half right. What? It says Lucy is a lesbian. But the thing is, it's not that I'm a lesbian. I just have not had very good experiences with men. <laughs> and the lesbians won't let me join the club on that on that basis. <laughs> uh, um, it's not much of an insult, is it? Lucy's a lesbian. Oh. And it's like, oh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not even trying it's pathetic i think they so might pathetic. english might not be their first language because the trolling is very short and, and a bit pathetic oh come so on more. i don't know awesome. the engaging really rubbish trolls it's a terrible oh, no. try. you need to try better luke yeah the best just just message too. back see me must try harder one star yeah that's just it, like your opinion <laughs> it says i'm not brave i'm not strong and i can't do whatever i want because i have autism mate have you seen me do mental arithmetic i am <laughs> oh are we laughing at <laughs> no way. did we just laugh at his or was he trying to say you had did we just do an un-pc thing ha ha no. you've got autism ha ha <laughs> no. Oh, I see the headlines uh, now. The is, oh, this is why I'm not engaging because I only engage with good tro trolls that bother yeah, to try. Yeah, we have any decent trolls. We do. Uh, I'm we autistic. Do That's a, I'm an autistic lesbian. Is that all you've got? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's called me. It's called me. I mean, it's you know, me. this day and age, this day, that's a fucking badge of honour, you fool. Yeah. <laughs> You just called me. You just called me. Um, Hannah Gadsby. Winner! Yay! Congratulations! Oh, she's fucking great. Oh, she's yeah, fantastic, she is. isn't she? Yeah, she that's is. Well, that's an absolute great. compliment. Thank you Aww. very much. The troll has turned. Bless him. It's troll is so okay. bad. It's become complimentary. Fantastic. Can I? Can I? Yeah, I'm jealous that now. <laughs> yeah. Can you are. Yeah. Yeah. Can I put that on my bio? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I mean, that is can. a quote. Of course you can. It should Hannah be, Gadsby Lucy. for the you autistic generation. <laughs> Hannah Gadsby for the autistic generation. Yes. Devon's <laughs> <laughs> answer to Hannah Gadsby. That's yeah. fantastic. Hannah Gadsby. Brilliant. I mean, Wonderful. last week I was compared to Norman Collier, which is, an, is a... Good Lord. A which is a stand-up comedian from the late seventies. So I mean, I'm I'm coming. I'm, I'm doing leaps and bounds here. You're, you're coming <laughs> round. Come up, mate. Your star is your star doth rise. <laughs> <laughs> your star <laughs> doth rise. How many viewers oh. have we still got? Are there still people actually watching this? Brilliant. I've got to be yeah. honest. Claire, we've got our highest viewing figures, so that's why we don't give a fuck about the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> have we got our highest viewing thing oh brilliant oh shall i give yeah. him a tit no oh, don't worry i'm not gonna do that <laughs> honestly, honestly we've we we got we've got lots of viewers baby, we don't need baby suckled dugs honestly they'd be like paying me to put them back on they would i think if i had started like an only fans page it would be yeah it's quite a depressing thing to realize that you've probably become a kink do you know what I mean? I'm no, I'm no longer sort of in that. <laughs> I'm no longer.
longer in like a conventional bracket. I've become yeah. a fucking kink. Oh yeah. god, it's depressing. I oh, you just gotta own it. Have you? Just gotta own it. <laughs> it's sort of liberating as well. <laughs> it's liberating. It's liberating. It is, it is liberating. It's very it's very it's very liberating not to care. To 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 genuinely not give a shit how people perceive you on in that way. I mean, I think God, I spent so much of my youth just desperate, desperate, desperate to be fancied, desperate to be, you know, approved of by by men and and probably other women, but mostly men. And oh, it's just yeah. Well, I, my mother was like she was like Elizabeth Bennett's mother from Pride and Prejudice, you know, just absolutely. You must get married. What is the point of you if you do not have a man? What's this? Single? Single? What's the point of you then? Um, so, yeah, I, I was very much brought up with this this notion that kind of finding a suitor was was a huge part of, of one's life mission, um, you know, and, and that somehow you were a bit of a failure at life if you if you didn't have a boyfriend. So I, I've kind of rolled from from relationship to relationship basically since I was about 15. This is the first time in 41 years that I've had a period of singledom that's that's lasted as long as it has. And it's 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 amazing. It turns out that actually, you know, you're just absolutely all right. Without a relationship, things still happen. You still function. Yeah. Life just goes on. It's been an absolute yeah. wonderful revelation. Um, and, and I've definitely got to know myself in a completely, completely different way. Um, you know, you, because you do become a product of relationships, don't you? You become a product of the relationships that you're in. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, whether or not you're compromising for that particular person or or over compromising or whatever it is, but you know, you, you oh, kind of become oh. an amorphous blob of each other. So it's been yeah. such a, it's been great just getting to know myself. Um, I've spent yeah. most of my life, my adult life, I've spent much more of my adult life single in a relationship. And I'm sure a counselor or a psychotherapist have a lot to say about it, but I feel so much stronger single. Yeah. I just, yeah. you, you don't have to compromise. You don't have to discuss no. what you're going to do. You just, Fucking get on with it. It's brilliant. I can do whatever. Oh god, absolutely. You, you become know, well, this is it. exactly. You make your own choices, and I think you can become without even realizing it. You know, I think of myself as this sort of strong feminist, this very strong person. But I think when you're in a relationship, you are. To a certain degree, you are psychologically controlled. Even if you're in a very, yeah. very liberated yeah. relationship, there are certain elements of it that are going to be, even if it's just compromise, it's a degree of control. I've definitely oh, yeah. been a little bit like a sort of bear that's been released from a lifetime of captivity. <laughs> you know, the cage doors open, but the bear doesn't quite realise that it can come out now and it's all yeah. right and it can make its own decisions. It's, it's definitely taken me a little bit of time to learn to drive the single vehicle. Yeah, mm. but I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah. You know how you know how um so I, I, I was single for ten years and I, I decry I described yeah. it as my feral years. Oh, so good. So <laughs> so much fun. Um yeah. but once you get to that plateau of self respect and confidence and inner peace, you release a pheromone where men seek to destroy this happiness. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they will That's woo you. They will love bomb you. They will do everything they can to convince you, although you're happy by yourself, you will be happier with a man. And you agree yeah. to it, and then the chains appear. And the cage yeah. appears. Yeah. So once you are happy, and then I, I, I see so many young girls like, oh, everything's so right in my life right now. All I need is a man. And I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 do not ruin this yeah. lovely moment in your yeah. life. <laughs> I, I think it's big, it's very, it's, 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 it's really difficult, isn't it? Because these 1950s ideals are, mm. you know, they are often still there. I'm not saying always, you know, but they are often still there, deeply, deeply, deeply in Britain, pre 1950s, really. But this idea that, you know, that, that, that men are looking for a partner because ultimately there's a part of them seeking to be looked after, really, oh, dare right. I say it. Yeah, and do 
and do some looking after. But even that in itself can be really disempowering, can't it? To have somebody, you know, caring for you in the particular way that they see fit. Even that in itself is quite, you know, it, it can be quite disempowering. But I um I do miss a bit of cock, to be fair. But apart from that, <laughs> but apart from that, I'm kind of really loving it. But yeah, hence hence my like hence my milkshake moment mid lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the minute but, my yeah. vibrator can put up a shelf, it's all over. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Googly eyes on the vibrator. That's all you need. Absolutely. Good morning. I am happy. Coffee silence. Good morning, vibrator. How are you? Oh, yeah, you're doing well. The Lord yeah. lower, but nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Excellent. Wow, this has been fantastic. Um, we've got well well so long. Yeah, thank you so, so much. You've been so generous with your time. Thank you. Oh, bless you. My absolute pleasure. I, I would say, oh. yeah, yeah, I've really carved out an evening for you. I have literally no other life. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been... <laughs> Please don't go. Um, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm going to... Are you just taste the review of Joan Rivers? I don't know if you've watched oh. it. But... Oh, shit. Were we meant to talk about Joan Rivers? Were we? No, oh, no, no, no. Me and Lucy do no. that afterwards. Oh, Sorry, there we are. It. All right, my loves. Well, listen, I'm sorry I've, I've waffled on far too much. It's no, been an absolute so. pleasure. No, it's been brilliant. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. And hello, and thank you to everybody who tuned in. Um, bless your hearts and and thank you both lovely to meet you Lucy and you Sarah and hopefully we'll meet up in real life and go yeah, out and have a drink go, Please, before, let's you go, before you go I, I would like no. just to, to promote you promote yes. you somehow Ooh. now okay. I've noticed that you've got a website but is that mainly your sculpture and art would yeah, you like yeah, to send to your yeah, Twitter or Facebook website. yeah 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 sure how can people find out more about I'm so lazy at social media things I'm terrible at self-promotion um well, I, I I I probably come to fa Facebook Facebook page of po poet and comedian that's probably where well in that, in that come case just a bit of advice to all of you as new, and fans of Claire if you're looking for Claire first of all it's C L A R E no yeah. there's no I there's no I in Claire <laughs> There's no I in pie. What? No. There's no I in team. No. If what? You just type, if you just type Claire Ferguson Walker into Google, you will find all of I'm her social media. One. I'm the only but one. I'm all over it like forget, a rash. It's hyphenated. Ferguson Walker is hyphenated. If you forget the hyphen, you're, you're out. <laughs> no hyphen, no mama. <laughs> Say that? How weird! How weird! How it oh, see so some part of me, well, some part of me is seeking some fucking baby man to mother, isn't it? No hyphen, no mama. That's a really <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, I feel dirty. I feel used by myself. Right, my loves. Mwah. On that note, I shall depart. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lots of love. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Hi. Hi. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. Sarah Bridgman. What Thank a you. best. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You did it again, Bridgie. You did it again. That's amazing. She's amazing, isn't she? I love Claire so much. I've fangirled on Claire. For, you know when you're like... Just follow someone on the uh, social. Just like, oh, because I love her. I really love her sculpture. I'd love to get her back on again next week. No, we can't. We've got Tom Glover next week. But um, her sculptures, her art, if you can check her out, she is friggin' amazing. Uh, and those of you that are with, with her, I'm sure you already know that because you're with us, uh, when it, when those that aren't trolling us. Um, uh, they're absolutely fantastic yeah and and someone earlier said talking about trolls someone i'm just going to check out who someone earlier said some, a random maestro said uh something like damn i love uh dealing with trolls like he said lol how did i miss this i like fun with trolls we do because we broadcast with joke pit joke pit live very kindly broadcast us uh over many platforms 
So wherever you are, we might be trolled. It's usually Twitch, isn't it? It's usually the teenagers. I was about to say, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's hometown to trolls. Like, yes. we can stream via Periscope on Twitter. We stream via YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. But if you yeah. want to go clip clop and trip trap yeah. to get a troll, you got yeah. to get yourself to Twitch. Twitch <laughs> <laughs> <Get> on. <laughs> Oh, good. But uh, oh. yeah, so she she was amazing. Balls. She was oh, amazing. Uh, if you're watching, Tom, no pressure. But there's the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say he won't be? He will put the kids to bed because Tom messaged me earlier and said, "Oh, it might be a bit late. I'm putting the kids to bed." And then he went, oh, "Wrong day. Oh, next week. No matter." <laughs> I didn't have to tell. He he told himself he were He's clearly looking forward to it because <laughs> he was here a week early. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who likes hardiness? Well done, Tom. Well done. Uh, she was just a bloody sherbet fountain of loveliness. Oh, I love her so much. And um, she, uh, she, Claire has already messaged to say, that was ace. Thank you so much. Kiss, kiss. I'm pleased we've got to get Claire back on in the near future. She's so, so good. I didn't even get to ask about sculptures and we uh, get really We get really aware when it cuts to the to the, the hour mark of having a guest on and we start sort of trying to sort of send each other like visual clues of like, we need to ask them for promote. We didn't ask her for a friend, um, but we, you know, we need to, we need to start wrapping it up yeah. thanking them and asking them what they want to plug. Yeah. And instead, both Sarah and I didn't look at each other and we were like, let's just see how long we can keep her on for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, oh, a fan girl. You may not, She's know. You may not realize the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, because you're pretty hot on time. You're normally like, well, at like yeah. 25, half eight. I, I know. Know. I literally, halfway through, they tell a lovely story and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. you got to go. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I want to be out here at eight. I need my food. I want my tea. But Claire's amazing. I could have had it for another hour. She's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking lately. Well done. That's amazing. So, um, wow. Okay. So, first of all, thank you, everybody, including yes. the trolls. God bless you, because Sarah <laughs> and I haven't been trolled in weeks. <laughs> I do miss the troll. I like it when we get a troll. But I went, my bar for trollage is high. You've got to be, yeah. you've got to think it through. Don't bother with this flipping. We've had some pretty good trolls. Yeah, we've, we've had I've some, some very good trolls, trolls come by, so no offence. You're sort of, your trainers are the big shoes. Yes. So if you're going to troll, well, if you're going to bring it, mind you, let's face it, if you're going to bring it, I'm always going to say, oh, what's wrong? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're right, right, right so this is where I press oh. the button. I kind of feel I need a break because that was so good. <laughs> Oh, get over yourself. You've got a two-minute break whilst I oh, press this button. Okay. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm gonna so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now ladies and gentlemen, the best act in her price range, Miss Joan Rivers. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. I was on the Today Show, Al Roker. Here's Joan Rivers, and she's 78 years young. And you want to go, and here's Al Roker, and he's 320 pounds thin, and then, oh, Angelina Jolie, if I could make just one person happy with my charity works, I'll die content. I thought, easy, give Jennifer Anderson back her husband. And, 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 yeah. When my mother was blind, I was sick of blind people, it's all about them. When was the last time a blind person gave you a compliment? Think about it. They're always talking about themselves. Is the train coming at me? <laughs> Which one of you ever looked at a picture of a Mexican in a magazine and ripped it out and brought it to a plastic surgeon and said, make me look like this? <laughs> oh, oh, children on an airplane. Lady, lady. Where is Casey Anthony when you need her? <laughs> Once a month, usually Kathy Griffin and I and Cher, we all meet at Cher's house. No makeup, no hair. We, we look like the three witches from Macbeth. I mean, you have, it's like. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I lost my entire family at our 
Auschwitz, okay? They were in the other bus and it broke down. They never showed up. It was uh, too much. And I won't tell you my Whitney Houston joke. It was, There we are. That's June Rivers. <laughs> We're back on. <laughs> Only that's, that was that was that was the year of the Olympics. That was 2012. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I had that on my notes. Now I suggested Joan, so as is customary on the kitchen sink, your turn to go first with the review. If you would like, if you're still with us. Well, I mean. Any Anybody who's watched my stand-up knows that I mentioned Joan within the first six seconds. <laughs> I do love myself a bit of Joan Rivers. I mean, she, oh, she's an enigma wrapped in a conundrum. Um, she is strong. She is driven. I still use her, I still use present tense for Joan because that woman can't just die and disappear. She is a presence that will be with with us forever in her work and and her words. I mean, for me watching that, you know, yes, certain things were slightly un PC. And I couldn't give a shit because she's 78. <laughs> and she's like, I've lived long enough to say this. Um, you know, she um she attacks her audience, right? I want fatties in the front, um, lesbians at the back, gays at the front, Chinese women, fuck off, old people, fuck off, anyone with kids, fuck off, um, you know, and on the way out, buy one of my scarves. Um, she is just amazing. And, and I couldn't agree with her more when she says, don't show me pictures of your kids if they're ugly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, she, she and then um I had to look it up. Casey Anthony, she mentions Casey Anthony in there about uh, kids on planes, like kids are always like in the chair. She she was known for a 2008 mysterious disappearance of a daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Like the fact, like the woman, the woman had been in the war eight days, she was dead, but she must have been Jewish because she came out and her hair was dry. Like there, she, she is an equal opportunities comedian because mm. everyone gets it. And I like that. She's not, I've seen comedians that have picked a certain genre of creed, color, race, whatever to attack. And like, it's their punch down bag. Whereas Joan, if you're not Joan, she's going to take the piss out of you. And the one person that she's going to take the piss out of the most is herself. Yeah. You yeah. will not be able to attack Joan Rivers to the level that Joan Rivers attacks herself. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. She, um, she, I, oh my God, Ray is put. I used to like her until I found out what a horrible person she was in real life. I don't want to look behind the curtain. I don't want to know. I, I, do you know what? As if she was a bitch to me, it would be the best day of my life that Joan was a bitch to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Random Maestro says legend. Um, I, I, A, I'm surprised that you brought this to the table because I don't know why I seem to put a lot of pressure on you for bringing new comedians <laughs> to the table. I seem to be the old guard. <laughs> um, but awesome. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. She's 78 and she's yeah. still, still that compass mentis and that fierce. I mean, the opening credits where the yeah. guy is behind the curtain shouting, coming up. The most yeah. amazing woman in the price range. And she's there with a plate doing a line of coke, licking it. I mean, come on. The woman, yeah. she Tiffany Haddish mm. is nowhere near as, as strong mm. on the stage as her. And Tiffany Haddish can set the world on fire. Mm. So, you go. I wonder what you think. <laughs> okay. I've written oh, the words. Have you liked it? Well, I suggest right. Now I've listened to um this this special, but also one from about twenty years ago. And the one from about I can't remember the name of it, but the one about twenty years ago, she's talking mainly about marriage and you know, you know, her life and all the rest of it. Yeah. I don't remember the jokes being as offensive. And when I watched tonight, when I watched this, I was like, right, what year was it? Because, right, number one, she's outrageous. She is outrageous. 
and I love that she comes in, she goes like, this is, it's just jokes. It's just jokes. You know, she is from a, a specific era. Um, i got to say, for now, I mean, I, you know, now don't come for me, Lucy, okay, but I'm going to make a controversial statement here. I can totally respect her craftsmanship. And I love some of her jokes, but, uh, and she's always the best, she's the biggest bet of her jokes. But oh, I yeah. did go with some of it is like, oh my God, I just don't know. I don't know. These, oh, like, I don't know. you know, she, she came for everyone. <laughs> she's like literally, literally everyone. I don't know. I, did, I was a bit like, I was a bit uncomfortable with some of them, I have to say. Um, but she does, She like I say, she's equal opportunities. She offends everyone. I have to say, if she was, even now, we've changed so much as a society and people just will not We're talk woke. about it. We're woke so now. It's almost now, because we've changed so much, watching that from 2012, if it's almost like watching a, a Roy Chubby Brown. It's almost, uh, or a Bernard Manning, almost. She's not as, and I don't, when I first watched it, there was no way the world was like that because I, when I first watched it, I loved it and I didn't even notice a lot of the offensiveness. I prefer her stuff that she can be funny without it. She didn't need to be the, the offensiveness. Like if you watch a documentary towards the end, she really struggled to get people to come and watch her. She, she had pages and pages in her book that was empty. And I wonder if she went more down the super, super, super offensive route to make even more of a name for herself. And I but don't think can I say that when she got offensive, mm. she was mentioning things that people don't mention anymore, but she mm. wasn't being derogatory to those people, if that makes sense. So mm. she was she was she's mentioning an individual, but she is picking on a group. And it's every she'll fucking pick, group. She'll pick on a group, but again, she's picking on them for traits that people have discussed in the past, but never mm. that those were negative traits. Mm. And I okay, guess so. This is very yeah. difficult to have this conversation in this day and age without without mentioning it, right? But she made an Asian joke where she took her eye skin and pulled it to the side, which is now a no, 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 no joke, okay? And which frankly, with her, her cosmetic surgery, I thought would yeah, be exactly. But the thing is, when she did that, she didn't do any stupid voice. Mm. She didn't say that that was a negative trait of their physical appearance. Mm. The butt of the joke was Rennie Zellweger. Mm. Do you do you know what I mean? So she is yeah. she, she is on the line of NPC. But when oh, she made oh, that I joke, go for it for a lot of them. Right, but, if that was Jim yeah. Davidson making that joke, it would have been some sort of song, some sort of accent, and the joke would have been aimed at the Asians. But yeah. the point yeah. was, she made that joke about Asian people to mm. make the joke about Rene. Mm. I, I, I mean, I can't mm. speak on behalf of a very large continent, <laughs> but I don't think they would have found that offensive because they were the butt of the joke. They were set up. They were the setup in the same way that. You, I can't they, remember that specific joke. I suppose it matters. Is is she saying that Renny Zellweger looks looks like a, an Asian person, and that's a bad thing? Like it's like, oh, surely no. That, she was saying that, that that physical that physical trait of the human genetics is that the 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 the, the makeup, the physical makeup of an Asian person is. The, the eyes, yeah. different yeah. different races and different creeds have got different physical features and different skin colours and that you can't have, you can't not accept that. Mm. But the fact is Renny Zellweger walked into a plastic surgeon's, made a very confused order, <laughs> came out for that <laughs> and came out actually for the worse. Um and I completely was, she in, was she hungry when she went to the plastic surgeon? That would <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> she came out with the wrong order. I think that's hilarious. But <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to go and watch a comedian and worry about joke for joke for joke. But I, I, yeah. when I make the suggestion, like I say, I think it's a sign of how much the world has changed. Sadly, she's not with us anymore. So what I want to no. do is, is comment much more on 
her craftsmanship, the fact yeah. she is joke, 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 joke. There is no, there's nothing lean. It's not just the jokes, it's her physicality. She was a, a great comedian. Considering she said in a documentary, she never wanted to be a comedian, she wanted to be an actor. You know, she was a great comedian, a fantastic, amazing comedian. Um, yeah, and I, I love the look. I loved watching the audience because there's times where you can really see the audience. There was one woman was like that all the way through, and at one time like that. But I bet she was bloody loving it. You know, you can tell when you love being. People love being shocked, and there yeah. there is a place for it in society. And I think if you're going to go and buy a ticket for an act like that. You, you should know what you're getting before you get it. And then that's that, that's fine. And I'm very much for, for free speech as long as, you know, it's not hating on anyone in particular, you know. It's, um, yeah. And I love the, you know, she talks a lot about the older older people. She's older self. Yeah. We're so short on positive older role models. And as a, a, a absolutely woman at the top of a game, what a friggin' great role model for that but she's incredibly controversial figure and will continue to be so i'm sure but the only um, is if so i noticed especially um i uh, we've got someone very very close to my family that whenever they spoke to my grandmother they didn't just mm -hmm. say hi how are you doing you know we'd say hi granny how are you doing what are you watching da, da, da. she would come in and she would talk to her like this Right. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you talking to an older person as if she has somehow changed maybe into a foreign foreign language student where you need to really enunciate and articulate and punctuate your points? Um, that when somebody gets, when I get so incensed with ageism because all yeah. the people have been around longer which means they've done more bad things they've done more good things and they certainly have done more sexy things than you have done um so to think that they suddenly I like <laughs> oh, yes, you know how people think that teenagers on their 13th birthday go from being a child to being a teenager on the 13th like that click like people mm -hmm. actually there may be a, it's something about older men and all especially older women when you get to a certain point People think you've gone really innocent, haven't you, Mrs. Bridgman? Yes. Yeah. Have you got the TV on today? And it's like, <laughs> who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah. Do you know, they they did this, that, and the other. You know, they took on a, a power march during the seventies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, they I'm not. It's a good Brexit. I'll have you know. <laughs> I went to march to say I didn't want Brexit. Yeah. But, so the, 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 that innocent but where if you showed them a joan rivers video and go all right that's what a 78 year old looks like ask her if she wants a cup of tea and a nap yeah yes absolutely yeah and i bet the answer is fuck no thank you very much um, look, at, look at the look at the women that we watched in you know the, the golden girls yes or even how the older women <laughs> raise but i'm 61 speak up ray sorry Speak up. <laughs> Is that what you want me to do, Mr. Turner? Um, you're volume up, right? <laughs> yeah. So you've got like the, the people, the characters that were in the Mary Tyler Moore show and Rhoda, the older characters, the older female characters were amazing in that. You've got yeah. um, uh, the older characters in Golden Girls and Joan Rivers. I don't understand how we can make it clearer that older women are not innocent <laughs> and, and, and virtuous. Oh, like, yeah. they have, their sins are covered as they get older. I don't understand. I mean, maybe we're maybe we're the ones that are perpetrating it. Um, and um, oh, uh, wow. Okay. Well, first of all, um, I will always interrupt what I'm saying if somebody's going to put that on a message. Um, if anybody has enjoyed the show, I would love to donate towards our tech fees. If you go to jokepit.com and type in the kitchen sink, you will see a donate button on the side of the page. Um, or you can go to uh, Lucy or Sarah because we, we share the money. So like whatever's easiest. But ultimately, thank you. Wow, thank you so much. It's um, that makes it worth it, eh? Um, but there are so many strong female um, characters in TV, like Joan, like the Golden Girls. Why mm -hmm. then somebody else is like, I'm going to write a script, and the old woman will just go, "Ooh, fancy that," and that will be the whole script for them. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but this is what we need to write for for our, for ourselves, <laughs> for myself. When you know, for yeah, we're underrepresented, aren't we? Regardless, you know. Uh, I know I'm going to wang on about the old, uh, you know, sexual sex equality, gender. Equality. My brain's gone a bit now. I think, um, but it, it yeah, yeah. Just make the point that women don't lose it at a certain age. Yeah. <laughs> gone yeah. off. <laughs> I think I'm going through the menopause and perimenopause. That's perimenopause and gin. All right. Random maestro <laughs> saw that with my nan. She had a stroke, she didn't lose her marbles. Exactly. Losing sensation in half your face does not mean you lose out your ability to think and be funny. My my I'm I'm gonna watch this later with my mother. You know how I do. So I'll be on this, but this over my mother will be over there. And oh, I can't last think. week. When he watched last week, so the messages, I was like are you kidding me? <laughs> you were like, yes, it's on the other and you were pissing yourself. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, it's testament that you can watch your own show back and find it funny. When yeah. when when you looked straight down the camera and went, I could be filthy if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother was the matriarch of our family, and um, she was very Joan Rivers esque in the way that she was cutting. <laughs> My mum was going to be like, well, it was incredibly racist. <laughs> My grandmother, she aged like a fine vinegar. <laughs> She though. would smell your weakness and she would say it in the first opening line. Oh, hello, Sarah. I see you've had your hair cut short. Hmm. That, uh, that, that. <laughs> she could, she could. <laughs> God love you. I, I genuinely, we haven't got, any, we haven't got anybody like Joan Rivers at the moment. I mean, Betty White has stepped up completely. She's not even doing old pranksters or whatever, old jokers. Yeah. There's no, no one, no one really. You can't yeah. just wait for I, Millican I, to get old. Anyone watching? Can you think of anyone who's like, like an old lady like Joan Rivers who's top of her game and amazing with the jokes? And I can't, I can't either. I really can't. Well, one of us is going to have to live long enough to to get there. I mean, she's been around forever. She well, had talk shows. She had all her... We've got um, Julie Walters, but she's an actor. She's not really a... She's never been a stand-up, has she? No. no. And, um, you know, and at least Joan was a pure stand-up. She wasn't anything else, really, yeah. as much as she wanted to be. I mean, yeah. she did presenting. She did her talk shows. But she never really did acting, uh, which is what she wanted to do. I think she was afraid to do it if you watch the documentary, which I can fully recommend. <laughs> oh, amazing. And what's, what's my favourite drag queen? Um, Bianca Del Rio. Oh, oh God. Should we message God, Bianca? Just, can everyone message Bianca? Yeah. Everyone That's message it. Bianca and say that, they say that she needs to get on the <laughs> thing. <laughs> that right. might sound good. Right. Bianca, can you come on the kitchen I wanna, sink? I want to... I want to push you, right, yeah. to to start wrapping this up because you and me we can yes, wang on all night. To you to yeah. But, yeah, right. I'm not going new, right? All right. And it, it was mentioned by one of our, our viewers, maybe Ray, maybe Hugh. Um, don't roll your eyes, but it was mentioned recently. Oh, hang on. Um, Is it going to be a friggin' old fart again? <laughs> no! Come on, man. Let's have it. Who's it going to be for next okay, week? It's a TV show. It's a TV show. Say it again. It's a TV show. It's on the a banner. TV show. All oh, right. So you were, were reviewing a TV show. What era? What decade? Uh, it was four women living in a flat. Girls on top. Yeah, the final version to the young ones. We're going to yeah. review Girls on Top. Fun Brilliant. fact, although Ullman was in it, she never did any of the writing. It was all Wax, French and Saunders. Well, Tr Tracy Ullman at the time was the most successful one of all of them, wasn't she? So, yeah. um, and they, they oh, who was who's the old lady in that? Oh, oh, I looked her up. I looked. I looked her up last yeah. night. Fenella, Fenella, something. Fenella. I can't remember her surname. Richardson, Robinson. 
something like that. But she was in it, and she was oh, she was amazing. She was a fantastic, uh, funny actress in Carry. She was in Carry On Screaming. She played like the um, Morticia type character in that. Oh, yes. that's, that's one of my favorite films as well. Oh, can we do films? Can we start doing films? Like, can we talk about talking about all controversial Blazing Saddles? That's one of my favorite. Oh, oh, hang on, we'll just ask who's in charge of the show. Uh, oh yes. yeah, <laughs> um, Vanilla Fielding. Oh Ray, well done, bloody. Uh, Joan Greenwood, I thought it was. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. <laughs> but that's right, Joan Greenwood, because she was in Whiskey Galore, which is my favourite comedy film. Oh, brilliant. Okay, but, well, yeah. anyone that wants to watch and review along with us, we don't get many reviewing along with us, I have to say, but we enjoy it. I hope you in, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. If you want us to carry on reviewing, well, we want to carry on reviewing. Oh, 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 give us some good feedback. <laughs> yeah. Give us some good positive <laughs> feedback. We had enough of the trolls. We, we have yeah, the trolls yeah. repeating stuff to us in, a, in the opposite direction. Oh, I really need some food now because I've I've clearly lost it. This has been such a good show. Are we yeah. going to play the outro again or the intro we again? We are going to play the outro again. So everybody, I just remind you, you, if you've enjoyed your show today with us, please go to jokepit.com, um, yes. look up the Kitchen yeah. Sink fan page, and you'll be able to buy us a cuppa um, through the donation box there. Unfortunately, it's not like the old coffee system. We don't get names of people that donated. So... Sozza, but um, please let us know if you've donated and we'll we'll probably give you a shout out or, I don't know, I'll send Sarah around with some cake as long as it's not me. (laughs) The cake will get there, but the thought will be there. (laughs) Um, But please do, if you've got... Thank you to everyone that's watched today. Thank you so much for coming and joining us and hopefully join us next week where we've got Tom Glover, who's an amazing comedian from the Southwest. So please come back for that. We're every Thursday. We do see 6 p.m. Every Thursday, 6 till 8-ish. Yes. We want to find out what we want to do. That's how, 6 to half past. Then we have a guest on. Yeah. Which is half 6 till whenever. And then uh, then we review the comedy. And next week we're reviewing Girls on Top. Awesome. That's a great yeah. choice. Look forward to that. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to wait. We're going to press the outro. Um, and we will see you all next Thursday. Mwah. Bye. Welcome to the kitchen sink. We will chat, we will make you think. You will not want to go to the loo. You could miss a lot if you had that poo. Stay and watch and join in. Yeah. <laughs>